Hello everyone, and welcome to another CPL Match of the Week. We're casting Week 3 games here, we're about halfway through the season, it's been exciting so far, and hopefully these games keep living up to the standard we've seen so far. I'm Sage Zero, here with me tonight is Packrat, what up buddy? Not much, what's up with you? Casting StarCraft, man, like you're gonna throw me that like <laughs> softball question as your bounce back? Come on man, get your energy up, we got games to watch. We're watching some Tier 0 between Fear Factory and the Destructodes. As far as how the season's been going so far, you know, people playing their games. This week, there's a little more walkover action than I like seeing, so hopefully everyone, you know, one-time recurrence. I'll forgive you once, but don't do it again. Make sure you're playing your games, working with the coaches, uploading your replays, and all the usual stuff that I'm going to yell at you for all season long. But we got plenty of stuff this week. You know, it's the match of the week stuff tonight and tomorrow, and then Thursday afternoon with on uh, the EU-friendly time slot. And then I think Cold Warp has already kind of claimed up a spot Thursday night. So there's going to be plenty of casting action for all you people to check out. And as we get started, Nightcat rating with the Party 16 to make sure we're starting off strong. Thank you very much, Nightcat. We're going to get started into that first game, though, between these players far beyond my skill level. So I can't tell them what to do. I'm just going to, you know, enjoy the games. All right, in the top right, did they top respond? Yes, they did, thank God. In the top right, in the blue Zerg, it's 442, representing Fear Factory. And in the bottom left, in the red Protoss, we have Para Hydra Cannon. Yeah, that is a uh, alias, it's NGZ. Ah, NGZ. Which, I mean, that rolls off the tongue so much more, right? <laughs> and Terra Hydra Cannon, I suppose. Uh, I suppose it probably does. Ah, yeah, sure. It's, uh, it's Eclipse. I find I find Eclipse is a weird map to play CVP when it goes late because the there's not a symmetrical map, so there's like these two bases down in the corner, and I always get annoyed because Protoss takes those and I can never take them back. I'd be interested interested to see what a a better Zerg does late game here because I tend to just lose. Well, I mean, a lot of the games I feel like I see is the Zerg going for the bottom uh, bottom two bases in the bottom right, and then that double gas in the top left just doesn't get taken. Like <laughs> no one cares, and we're seeing the Protoss set up. It looks like going to be set up for a gateway span. Doesn't want to waste any time at all. Waits for the money before going out to scout. And this could be a little Zerg bit interesting. The Zerg's hatch. not making an overlord. <laughs> yeah, that is a uh, that's a hatchery first ten hatch. Uh, what's the appeal of going with this instead of like maybe the standard twelve, just that it doesn't get blocked? Uh, so usually you go ten hatch to get like super super fast circlings. Although generally you go pool after hatchery and not overlord after hatchery. Um, if you're gonna go overlord after hatchery, I don't know why you would do this, but. Uh, I mean, you, you still get super early larva, so that's like the, the benefit. So, gonna make that spawning pool, and then usually when you see Zerg doing a build like this, uh, it's to make a gajillion lings and overrun Protoss uh, as soon as possible. Which is a lot more possible against Gateway Expand, because they're not gonna have cannons for a good while. But, uh, 440 tube just making drones. Yeah, I'm curious to see what we're seeing from 440. I've seen him play a couple games. During our bye week, we did a little in-house tournament. He was one of the players that did quite well. So I'm a little bit interested to see what he's doing. I feel like he, not not totally standard, but a little like standard plus. Like just with a little spice, a little extra garlic powder in the build, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so as far as I know, this like 10 hatch was at one point more common. I was reading some like like 20 year old TL posts about it. Like, it used to be considered more of just a macro opening because you get the early larva. Uh, but I don't think that many people play it that way anymore. I'm interested to see the Zealot looks like it's going to get here just in time to get surrounded by Lings. Yeah, with, there's a out. lot of legs that are about to pop up here. That little pylon block at the 12 gets canceled off, so gonna force the legs, gonna be able to turn around here, but Pros cannot afford to lose this. The legs don't block, so might be able to escape with his life, maybe lose just the probe here. We see that third uh, drone that's going down to get the third base. It's down in the bottom right instead, so or laying claim to that pivotal area in the mid game. Yeah, and notably no gas taken, so these Zerglings aren't gonna have speed anytime soon. 
Um, looks like we're gonna avoid heading speed to just get a third hatchery right away. I'm interested to see how well this works out, because I think that this cannon is going to be done? Is this yeah. a full wall? I don't know how this wall works. This is not a full wall. <laughs> it is, there's a zealot blocking it for a reason. But I don't know if block. there's a, uh, a second hole here. I think that probe on the side. You can see units getting pulled. Yeah, there's definitely holes oh. here. But the lanes are going to start working on the pile and try to do damage. Shield's already completely depleted. That can't still not up yet. It's trying its best to finish in time. Pilot gets killed. Nothing's getting powered. That zealot's so close to being done, but he ain't going to do anything. And, man, that's a fast game one. But you know what? Lanes are just real good. <laughs> Getting it done quick. Uh, well, that is roughly what I expected to see, I guess. Usually uh, usually you do that with the gas, but uh, I guess no gas needed if you just uh, show up faster than your opponent thinks you're going to. Yeah, story of my entire uh, PVZ career. So, you know, quick game that gets a start, and now we got people here. Uh, as you can see, we have new layouts. This is done by the fantastic Super Scion. He usually does a lot of our uh, like display stuff every season. He's really good at this kind of stuff. We don't. I don't even know if we give him a prompt. He just like makes stuff, and I'm like, that's ridiculous. So we got the new layouts, everything looking good. Let me know if readability is good. If the font size is like clear enough for everybody. Let me know. Like, give me some feedback if everything looks good. Or next time you see Super Scion, just give him some love for always doing these things for us, and it always looks so good. Yeah, it really is a lot of work to put together these overlays, so thanks so much for doing that. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine. I'm, but I'm real bad at art, so, like, I mean, if you ever play Scribble with me, I'm not good at that. <laughs> right, we're going to get into our next set of games. In the top right, in the blue Zerg, it's 440 tube. And in the bottom right, in the red, it's our Protoss, who is secretly NGZ. Secretly NGZ. Yeah, I, like, why, why are these weird They're notorious. Aliens? See, like, my alias makes sense. I, like, I gotta rep the love for Carbot somehow. And it's like, I can't my make alias. you play with the skin on your end, so if I just let you know I'm, I love it, like, I have a reason. I'm trying to shill some uh, Carbot for the guy. <laughs> I, my alias is a somewhat obscure anime reference, but I usually don't play on it for CPL because people won't know that it's me in the, like, CPL channel room or whatever. Ooh, look at this pylon positioning. We are not going to have the normal kind of build. No expansion yes. here. We're going to get some two-gate action. And doing it on the floor player map, I mean, if you find the Zerg fast enough, this could be very, very strong. Especially since that first Overlord, it's not going the right direction. <laughs> it is not. Uh, this also, you know, if you are just really tired of losing the, like early Ling shenanigans, then 10, 12 gates like reasonably good. I mean, you... You can still lose because of lings, but you have to actually go out on the map. If you just stay on your ramp, it's like really, really hard to break like three zealots on a ramp with circlings. Okay. Well, you said 10-12 gate. This is not 10-12 gate. This is 9-9 nine, uh, nine gate. Extra aggressive on the four-player cool. map. I think uh, our press player may be feeling the heat after the first game. Throwing a little bit of the dice, wants to just see if he can sneak his way into a little build or advantage. And unfortunately, that probe not going the right direction here. It wasn't over for yeah. opening. And not an immediate rush to get that second hatchery. The drone scout is going to go out and should see these gateways in time to have an idea what's going on, but won't see them in production, so won't actually know that they were 9 9 and a little more aggressive. Yeah, if I was Zerg, I would be confused by this because usually uh, the the ten the 9 9 gates you don't make in your base, you make them in the middle somewhere. Although this map's also one of those ones where it's annoying to make in the middle, but you can. Well, I can't imagine uh, you'd want to commit to doing 9-9 nine, nine gates because if you lose any bit of control links could just pick that off so much easier when it's back at home maybe a little easier to defend not just very committed to killing them immediately just really dedicated pressure yeah i'll be interesting to see how that works out because it would hurt your economy quite a bit more uh to do 9-9 nine, nine versus 10-12 uh but we'll see so uh i think a lot of it's going to hinge on whether zerg realizes this is earlier than they are perhaps accustomed to uh, but, man, does, does three drones and two lings kill a zealot? Three drones and four lings kills a zealot, that's for sure. Yeah, but the second one's on the way, you just gotta not Drone overcommit numbers. right now. Gotta bait these, uh, lings coming out, and they still have that probe to give you that little extra damage, it makes it so much more effective at killing these early lings. 
So we'll see. It does 440 sense what's going on. He is making a lot of links behind. He's not trying to sneak out drone. So I think understanding the threat he could be under, but still got to actually survive. Yeah, and this drone looks suspiciously positioned as if it's going to be used to make a sunken colony. Uh, but can't get it sniped. That would be bad. Uh, also don't want to fight with your lings alone. No, right now I don't think you have a choice here. These two pros actually add a significant DPS. More Zealous coming in. That sunk. It's not going to finish in time. And 440 doesn't have a whole lot of lings made here. This is going to be big damage. Hopefully he doesn't lose the hatchery or anything. But he is being patient, not trying to rush down, take a fight that's surely going to end in a loss. Waiting for more legs, trying to get whatever he can. The, the zealot wall at the ramp going to make it super annoying for, to deal with this pressure at the natural. I believe usually you want to drill, like drone drill these zealots on the ramp. I'm not really sure. Once zealots gets on my ramp, I usually leave the game. <laughs> High this, level this, is pain, this, is, this is painful, as Zerg, because, yeah, they just do that to all your links. <laughs> yeah, you can oh, see, no. not even going for the hatchery. He wants to get in there before more links can get developed. There's no sunk was made here. The gas mining did stop. No lair on the way. It's just going to be with these corners getting defended. It's five zealots, and they're all still reasonably healthy. It's not like they're getting really whittled down here. Well... At this point, they they are they are kind of they got into the drone line there for a minute, and uh, drones are surprisingly good boxers. You gotta be careful getting glitched out here. And yeah, all the zealots gonna be cleaned up. Although we're down to eight drones and almost zero zerglings, and there's still zealots streaming out here. And another gateway going up at home. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I love this. <laughs> not interested in taking taking any Vespian gas today. Well, I mean, he got in the main. He sees no gas from his opponents. Oh, yeah. Like, you're only going to make lings. I can just keep making more zealots. Like, I don't see why that would zealots ever be a problem. Are, uh, zealots are pretty good. I believe these lings have speed now, though, which can be pretty rough for the all-zealot, all-day strat. Uh, yeah, you can even see the retreat from uh, the pros right away the moment he sees that speed's finished. The third game is going to finish. Still has to start it. A Nexus. Finally getting the gas. Cybercore will be on the way eventually. But these lanes aren't going to be able to break through, but this is does buy a little comfort for 440 to try to recuperate, but he's making lings. He's hoping for some big counterattack damage, but you're not going to get through that ramp. Yeah. Uh, from here, from here it is drone time. And it looks like 442 degrees. He's got at least one drone in production. Uh, and this is... Uh... Kind of, a, kind of a tough spot, I feel like, as Zerg, because your opponent has the... Uh, economy to just make gate zealots off of all these gateways and you can see the supplies are getting pretty out of hand you got like 20 supply of zealots versus 10 supply of zerglings zerglings aren't that good well i mean that's that's 20 zealots. that's 20 zerglings versus 10 zealots by pure numbers alone no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so uh oh and a citadel of a dune coming down so i think this, this is going to hinge on how much time Zerg has, whether Zerg has time to get up like maybe a third hatchery or some baller tech, but I think the baller tech would be late at this point, so... Well, Possibly I'm actually a little hatch. surprised. Uh, Zerg did retreat the overlords, but there wasn't even a sign... Like, how are you going to get those overlords out of your base? That could have been free scouting info, and knowing that it's Citadel here, I think you could anticipate it's probably going to be at least speed zealots, maybe like a transition to like an old-school zealot archon with a very weird timing. That would be a, a fun a fun timing. Um, looks like Zerg is throwing down many a creep colony. Uh, so, guess the plan is going to be to hold on two hatcheries. I do like Zerg. that the Zerg is at least being careful here, not like morphing them all right away. The lakes will at least give you enough time to know what's going on here, and finally getting the lair started on the way. So, if you buy enough time. Like, actually, at this point, what would you even go for? You go for mutas, or, like, your time's kind of shambles. Absolutely. You just go for la uh, lurkers. No, ab absolutely mutas. You don't need that many drones to make mutas. I think uh, 442 has 18. You need 16 to make mutas off of two hatcheries. So uh, hmm. I would I would go muta here. I think lurkers, lurkers take a long time and more upfront investment. Yeah, I just wasn't really sure because you could start the Hydra then at least like front load some of the transition to get some of the tech buildings. And then you have Hydras, the access to them. But with the second extractor out of the way, no Hydra didn't start yet. It seems like it will be mutas like you're saying. It should be pretty good if you catch them off guard, but those legs are about to finish up. There's a lot of zealots done. They don't have plus one, but still, you can see 440 fanned out his lings to scout. 
I count 18 zealots. There's way too many zealots. I don't think there's. You're gonna need more than three sunks. <laughs> yeah, well, we're gonna start morphing many more sunks and all, like all wings. I don't think this is gonna go well. <laughs> Well, there we go. The legs do kick in. Now we're running forward, and some of those legs are still in scouting positions, not going to be back at home to defend. Trying to make the spire at the natural. Oh, that's so vulnerable. That's so vulnerable if he breaks through here. But I guess the game's over if it happens, so we'll see if the defense is enough. There's not a lot of links. That fourth sunk is not going to get finished, and these elves are just marching in the fight. You can't even, like, surround them at all. They're just making a front line in front of everything. Not even focus firing. Just going to do so much damage so quickly. Zealots are so strong for the cross. I don't know if you ever played the, uh, the Protoss AI, but uh, if you lose, it looks something like this. They just roll in with a billion Zealots. And, uh, yeah. Don't don't think it's going to be enough out of 442. Maybe if this Spire finishes and the Zealots are distracted, you could go for, like, a tie game or something. I don't think it's going to matter, though. Yeah, I mean, even at that point, Fort Hoare's burning all their money trying to defend. Can't even get to the Mutas. But uh, the Zealots, turns out if you just make enough of them, it's all you're really looking for, right? So, gets a, it gets another game all up. Zealots we're going to see day. we're gonna see game three already in that first set tonight. These folks aren't messing around. Well, Although they had uh, important important plans later that night. <laughs> well, I think maybe they had an agreement. It was like, listen, let's just only make the first unit we can and see what happens. <laughs> well, you know, it's on, it's on game three now. Maybe this unlocks that second stage of the tech. We'll see if uh, this ends up playing out a little bit better. It gives a little more of a game. But you know what? Even I still respect cheese. So every time we see stuff like this, it's a good time to me. And they didn't play Tyrus Bomb this time because they're animals for some reason. That's fine. In the top left, in the gray Zerg, it's 442. Oh, yeah, in the in the bottom right, in the brown Protoss, is Terra Hydra Cannon, who is secretly NGZ. So, my question is, Polaris was supposed to be the first map played, right? Uh... Is that true this week? Um... Um... Because <laughs> I, played, I played Polaris first this week. <laughs> I, I, I just... thought that was how it was supposed to go. Well, they I might can, have I sent can... in these replays in the wrong order. <laughs> well, I can assure you they're not in the wrong order, because I didn't like look it up, because I'm lazy sometimes. But I did, when I was looking at the replays and organizing my folders, I did see the date, like the creation date. So these are in the order they were played. Now, if whether that was supposed to be the correct order to be played, <laughs> that's a very different discussion. And now you mentioned that, I do think I do remember Polaris being the first match. <laughs> so, huh. Well, whatever. That's cool. <laughs> Maybe they just both weren't interested in playing on Polaris. And they're like, let's do it last. I think Polaris is probably the weirdest map in the CPL pool. You think it's weirder like, than Ascension? Hmm... I always forget Ascension exists, but I, I still think so. Because, like, I don't know, this, uh, the third setup is is interesting. The fact that there's, like, no really obvious close gas third is a little rough. Yeah, but you got the double gases in the corners. <laughs> it's like, that's all the gas you need, well, right? 440 tube is making uh, an Overlord again after a 10 hatch, so... I guess this is just uh, the strat. Oh, look uh, at this. Yeah, Terra, Terra, Terra Hydra knows. Cannon. Wait, did he have a forge? No, he doesn't even have a forge. His wall's like crazy. Is he going Nexus first? Nexus first would be ill-advised, in my opinion. But uh, but there's a reason I'm not tier zero. So <laughs> let's, let's see how that works out. Uh Okay. I mean, my intuition would be that if Zerg just makes all links and rallies them, that your forge won't be in time. But I mean, so the this build is the links aren't that early. Like it's later than it's later than like overpool links. But you so, get more of them quicker, don't you? Because you, get you do get more of them. Yeah, you get a lot of them. Um, so like instead of the first batch being six links, like the first batch is eight links, and your speed is very quick, and then you've got like. You're, you got lings off of two hatcheries from that point on, but uh, I guess we'll see. I mean, it, I think time-wise, if the cannon goes down right now, at least one of them will be, be done. Um, but well, one, one of them I won't guess. be enough against these four lings that are right. Yeah, need, <laughs> I need to see that second cannon. I don't. 
Maybe is it or is this the magic of a tier zero players? Like, dude, one can is enough. Like, he's about to prove me wrong. We're about to have a very short series. I'm not sure which. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe if you block with well, or maybe if you just build a second cannon. I was gonna say maybe if you like block with probes. I have no idea how many gaps any walls are. Uh, I gotta look at this wall. I'm like that might be ultra lisk proof. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, it's not ultralist proof. Um, the amount of wall, uh, amount of gaps in the wall, we're, we're not going to talk about my knowledge of press walls. We, everyone is known. I'm well renowned for being terrible at walling. But usually, wherever there's a pylon, there's probably a hole. <laughs> at least uh, something to help you out. Well, it looks like the rush distance on Polaris is long enough that these lings are not going to be able to get in. Uh, well, probes on the ramp are going to keep them at bay. Yeah. See, see, this is the uh, magic of a tier zero player that I always forget to pull the pros to block the ramp because you can see how effective it is. Because you know you can't fight the two cans, you gotta try the run by. And that's a big investment of lings early on, lost by the Zerg here. They are getting another hatchery yes. up at the 12 o'clock, so they're gonna have something to go behind this. We'll see if it ends up being hatchery into some kind of pressure, or, or hydra into some kind of pressure, or if they're gonna yeah. just try to play the normal game. I mean, 10 hatch is still reasonably economical. I mean, it's you're losing out on larva compared to like a 12 hatch, but uh, you will you still have a lot of larva available. So if you're allowed to just make drones like this and versus Nexus first, I mean, is there even a zealot in production? I don't see a zealot anywhere. So uh, there's not a lot of space to just drone off of these now three hatcheries. So I think that they shouldn't have too much trouble getting back into this. I mean, you can really look at that drone count. They're definitely not in a bad spot at all here. And they're working on Lair, so not going to try to do any Hydra Buster. I think they are looking towards the next step. That third base was at a mineral only, though. So I think they got to, when they take that next base and get a corner, get the double gas income, that'll be a lot more intimidating from the Zerg. But right now, everything looking pretty good. And Stargate's on the way, so we can get a normal looking game, despite some unusual kind of openers that you see in the matchup. Yeah, uh... I do wonder whether Zerg is going to try to go for Expire or not. Um, I think Expire would be late at this point compared to the Stargate. Uh, but we we shall see. Uh, but otherwise, the fact that Protoss had these Zealots uh, took a very long time to exist. So uh, Zerg's got just a ton of space for drones. 27 drones already. That's a lot of drones. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot of minerals. They're adding up. They're going straight up to the five uh, hatchery here. Spire is on the way, so the classic kind of mix of things. So we'll see if they actually go mute us, but probably just going to be for Scourge to dissuade this uh, first Corsair or whatever did, it pops out. Did that, did that Stargate get canceled? I don't yeah, see Yeah, it, it did. Yeah, I was like, I was like, look, right. I'm, like, yeah, I remember. I'm like, where's the Stargate? <laughs> I think I these guys are Corsair just... Corsair in production, and I was like, well, I feel like a Tier 0 player would have remembered to make their Corsair. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, they must have scouted something or have some feeling what's going on here where they feel like the Stargate's not necessary. And switching straight to the, the Citadel, like, I thought, like, maybe the Stargate finished and then again the Citadel because you normally get both anyway. So actually canceling it, kind of wasting the resources and the time. I'm a little bit surprised possible, to see that move here. It's possible that the, there was an Overlord in the base at the right time and they just wanted to fool the Overlord. Um, but it looks like the probe is not going to get in to see that there's a spire on the way. And meanwhile, we've got zealot legs and zealots in production. And uh, I think that's going to match up a little bit rough if, well, there's no second guess. So maybe Zerg might not go into Mutas. Well, legs and plus one are not finished yet. So a lot of speed zealots or speed lanes are going to fight on the bridge here. And you haven't seen a Stargate yet. Like you made the spire. At what point as Zerg do you consider just going Muta anyway? We're seeing more games getting out of fast psionic storm being researched. There's definitely a window here for Zerg to get something done, or at least take that fourth base while Pros is powering up before they can comfortably move out. Yeah, uh, Zerg might just have not noticed that the Corsair hasn't arrived yet. Um, looks like they're just going into Hydra upgrades and uh, Overlord speed. Ling's gonna try to be annoying on this cannon, um, but will not be successful. These cannons have uh, they've they've been worth they've been worth thus far, pretty good kill count on them. Yeah, it seems pretty reasonable here. And you can see more cans got started and canceled. Ultra canceled. I, I think NGC is playing uh, a little bit of a wild boy right now. He's he's doing whatever it's, he it's, wants uh, to do. It's it's game it's game three. You know, like you gotta gotta think that you're a little bit in the head of your opponent at some point. You know, like oh, like trying to predict more what they're doing as opposed to just sticking to your standard. 
Although it's not like games one and two showed us much of the macro game, so maybe not. Maybe any uh, inferences about how 442 was going to play the rest of the game are unfounded. Uh, we can see a little move out here. Not a lot of Zealous, but there is that first Templar uh, with a couple more behind it. Has Energy 4 Storm. Storm just finished up, so can start working on that as they please. Adding out a lot of gateways is kind of building up on this two-base army, but I feel like you're supposed to have more gateways for that if that's really the plan. So maybe an attempt to take another base. They already got the probe in the bottom left to do so if they feel comfortable. Scourge are seeing all of this too, so Zerg should have a, a very good idea of what's going on. And Zerg has up to six hatcheries now, and a seventh going up for the fourth base of the double gas. So, <laughs> oh, that uh, Archon just punched some Scourge. That that feels mm, good. You you hate to see it unless you don't. Uh, oh, I I do not. We're seeing a move out. From <laughs> this is what I want to see here. Decent amount of speed cells. They got the plus one weapons, working on armor, and leaving the Templar behind a little, not a little, a little bit fast. Not a lot of hydras here, though, so 440 has to retreat, has to be careful. He's going to try to bottleneck on the bridge, and let's see if uh, NGZ is feeling real bold to try to just walk across the bridge. That could spell trouble very quickly. <laughs> yeah, that could be it. Could be very dangerous. Um, but it looks like, as you said, it's this a this attack is really just meant to give enough space to create a third base, it seems like. Uh, NGZ's got the third going up at the double gas themselves, so both players reaching for the double gas early. Uh, Zealots Ooh. do get across uh, and are going to get good surface area on these Hydras. Ooh, and a nice storm, too. Uh, but I think the arc is just going to be too much for them to be able to get through. Yeah, they took a lot of damage getting across there. The storms, oh, are, doing, the storms are doing as much as they possibly can, but you can see that Protoss Army gets wiped out. Even before that fight, 440 was up a couple workers and up in supply on Hydras alone, so getting that good concave, resetting the unit count on both sides, 440 is definitely going to be able to replenish a lot faster. But they're still very yeah. stuck on this kind of low tech. Like, I haven't even seen them get Lurker Aspect. I also have not seen Lurker Aspect in production, um, which doesn't mean it didn't happen. I don't see everything that goes in the uh, the production tab, but... Yeah, I would. Uh, I'd be curious to see if there is that. If there are, if there is lurker aspect done, there's no lurkers to show for it. And uh, this amount of hydras though might be able to bust this third if 442 knows it exists. I don't know what they have or haven't scouted yet, um, and they don't really have great eyes on what's going on with Protoss. But these probes should be a giveaway. Yeah, that there, these, these that there are, is a third. <laughs> they're not just where, a giveaway. Where could they're those be going? <laughs> Those aren't a giveaway. They're a donation if you wanted to go and get them. But he's going to break the front while he has an opportunity. Good mm. Storm goes down. Going to dissuade this a bit. But 440, look at this. Like, this worker count's ridiculous. They're already up like 10 workers pretty much. Managed to debate out a couple of Storms uh, sniping some Templars. Not a lot of units up here. The cans are gone. That Storm is going to do the trick to close this up. So that pressure barely gets held on because of all of those Storms hitting so well here. But... 440, despite all his losses, still even on workers, or still ahead on workers, still even in army count, adding on more hatcheries behind it, and lurkers about to finish. 55 drones, that's like right where you want to be for late game uh, ZVP. Going into a hive already, uh, oh, and no. have where's a second the... Evo. Lurkers about to finish, where's the Robo Bay? And there's no robotics, <laughs> no observers. This could be oh, real no. bad. And 440's gonna to use that knowledge of those pro transfer. He's gonna go push down to this base. Decent amount of defense. Archons, here. archons are gonna knock down a gateway because they can't get out. Protoss on Protoss violence. Awesome. <laughs> you hate to see it. Well, storm goes down. Not as good as some of the earlier ones. Gets baited out by 440. Manages to survive. Reinforcements are gonna try and attack here. As he's also taking the nine o'clock, taking another base behind it. So. 440 really putting some pressure on. There's not a lot of defense to this lower uh, left base. Let's see if they actually get to, get to clear up, but Terra's gonna try to move some units over, but it's a couple Archons, a couple Templars. It's not a lot of like real meaty units. Yeah, uh, unfortunately for 442, I think, as you pointed out, just a couple Lurkers could be very good here, but uh, none with the army at the moment. And I uh, don't quite think this Nexus is gonna go down. Oh, did I curse it? No, nah, right on the money. 55 HP, that's plenty. <laughs> it's so close, but does not manage to get <laughs> down. But there is that one lurker off to the right side. Do you see that? Maybe that gets through. Maybe that could oh. be the hero unit to clear out that base. Cheeky, cheeky lurker. Uh, well, we'll see now. As uh, we're getting uh, adrenal glands and carapace upgrades. Uh, 
uh, for Zerg. And what are Protoss' attack upgrades at? Protoss only has the one attack upgrade, and the second is not on the way yet, so Carapace might be in time. Ooh, nice storms. Jeez. I gotta learn how to storm like NGZ. He's kicking ass with these, and he's mixing in a couple Dark Templar. Now he's <laughs> dissuaded some of the uh, Overlord sites. It kind of makes this a little bit harder, but reinforcements from 440. He's gonna try to fight this in the middle of the map the best he can. Being willing to reset units, but I think Pros is sitting in a much better spot. They kept that third base alive. The economy is pretty strong, and they're starting to hit in a, a pretty good spot of production here. As the nurse, they now have about a 30 supply lead, and they're looking like they're feeling pretty comfortable here. But where are you going to attack here as Protoss? They're like, Zerg's starting to get a little out of hand. they got to be able to punish something, slow this down a little bit. Yeah, uh, and Zerg is finally morphing in a pretty good chunk of Lurkers, which makes it difficult to get into any of these bases. Uh, we'll see if Protoss gets an attack in before those can get set up. But at this point, Zerg has got what? Like, we got three, 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 ten hatcheries uh, going down. So that's... Uh, that's a lot of production. Adrenal glands is finished as well, so these zerglings are going to start to be uh, very dangerous. But oh. it looks like the Protoss attack's going to arrive with this double gas undetected. Yeah, manages to sneak through here. Not a lot of defense. We'll see if there's a reaction to try to defend this, but there's a lot of things to kill here. You can at least save the probes, but hey, here come those lurkers. Where's the detection? I still don't see observers. <laughs> so. They're in production, lurkers, but I don't think they're with the lurkers army. Lurkers above the ground do not require do not require observers. <laughs> and some of these uh, storms still hitting fantastically. The Hydra's trying to fight on that little bit of a ramp. They already ate a giant storm because of that. You can see this army from Protoss. The Zealots are getting whittled down. It's going to be just sitting to Dragoons without a massive amount of attack upgrades. So Link should be able to help uh, reinforce clean this up. Even that one DT has some detection. Not going to be quite enough here. So big attack, manages to lose a lot from both sides, but it looks like MG's gonna have to retreat and try to save what he can. Yeah, and I think losing these Dragoons might be uh, a bit painful. I know those are something that takes longer to build generally for uh, for Protoss. You don't want to lose all those. Zealots are free. <laughs> but, you know, Dragoons, they're expensive. This one DT, 10 kills already, he's, he's a veteran. <laughs> well, I mean, if you could just keep killing Lanks, you're and, pretty And an Observer has arrived. Which uh, makes this makes these lurkers uh, a lot less of a, a complete lockout. And we're still seeing a lot of hydras being reduced. More hatcheries getting out as well as these upgrades are trying to roll through the best they can. There's a little window here where the Zerg is feeling pretty good. They match the armor to the weapons upgrade. So for a little bit, these zealots will not be as effective because of how much those upgrades got delayed. For us, not yeah. trying to take a fourth base, they're not adding on a crap ton of gateways to just be comfortable on their three here. So I'm a little bit surprised to see, like, they either gotta make a really dedicated push to kill off one of these bases, or they gotta take their fourth base and prepare for a longer game. Yeah, and with Zerg having a fifth base set up already and an Ultra Cavern on the way, uh, plus their 2-2, two, two, uh, clock is ticking for Protoss. Uh, Out of all the bases you could take, that one? That, that mineral only in the middle of the map is like going to be impossible to defend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a decision. Uh, it's possible 442 doesn't know this mineral. No, but he might it'd have to because he saw that Zerg had it, so. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you wouldn't just take the mineral only near you, but I mean, I guess maybe the thought is like you're always going to be able to get those, so maybe get the dangerous minerals while you have map control and you can get the safe ones later. Yeah, but if you take the three o'clock base that hasn't been taken it from either side, that has gas on it. Like <laughs> that's that's the true, base you true want. True facts and a nice big choke. <laughs> uh, either way, awesome. that's fine though. Like you still Does see four forty tubes. Four forty tube hasn't scouted either of those bases. I don't know how often people play on this map. It's possible they ha just hadn't played on it. Or no, Terra Hydra Cannon hasn't scouted those bases. Maybe yeah. they don't know those are there. Or maybe you just want to punch uh, through the natural. You know where the natural yeah. is. You can try to fight that. Storm's going exactly. down, doing the best they can. Lurkers get cleaned up. There's still... Is there still an observer here? It's hard to keep track of some of these things, but still the fight's still raging still Sky on. Storm. Yeah. Nice these observers. observers. Fantastic. <laughs> A lot of lurkers getting morphed here. Is there another... Or No, it's not even lurkers. Those are lings. Oh, man. I'm not used to watching this in the regular skin. Lings are going to try <laughs> to reinforce from the backside. 17 sets are in production here. You can see the High Templars are kind of out of juice. Needs to start working Archons. Some of these Zealots are going into the main. They're going to stop mining here. Maybe kill some tech off, but 
if the Protoss loses all their army here, this this spot is looking real good. But if you lose everything on this attack, not as good. But at least making time, he's going to get an attack over the top right as well as the stuff with the natural gets cleaned up. Yeah, and does manage to cancel the uh, the plus two carapace as well on the evolution chamber in the main, uh, which is pretty significant. That's a long upgrade. Yeah, I'd say that's probably the best thing about the attack instead of the damage that was actually dealt here. This little force top right is trying to work through, but not a whole lot of use here. They do see the Ultra's Cavern. The speed upgrade does finish in time. We don't see the Ultra's actually in production. The 440 is actually kind of dry on minerals, of all things, given how this game's going out. But still, lots of links and lurkers should be able to clean this up. And finally, we're starting to see uh, Zerk try to get on the map. Going to pick off a Templar, a couple little links looking for some opportunity to do some damage. But they're not going to find this wild-ass base because we would take this base. <laughs> There's also a sneaky High Templar just chilling in the main of uh, 442. You know, drones might transfer back in. That guy's got uh, two storms in him. But, uh, ooh, the sneaky base. The sneaky, the so, the so not sneaky at sneaky base is uh, detected by the Zerglings. I think that might be not long for this world. Yeah, it seems Once 442 gets their production going. Yeah, 440 actually ha took that base to the 3 o'clock, but hasn't used anything on it. I think maybe they're just taking it to take it, so the process can be It's been a bit hectic, you know? <laughs> hey. Under attack in like three different places. Oh, this oh I think this probe is going to be in for a rude discovery that this base is already occupied. Oh, it's been very occupied Ow. as well. Links are going in for that mineral base that's so out in the middle of the open. Probes get evacuated. <laughs> no way to defend this one. So that's going to be a base getting killed off here for the Pros. Their mains mind out. That natural is looking pretty dry as well. So I think the plan now for Pros, you got to focus on getting a second base and controlling it. And there's some links to detect the 6 o'clock. The probe's actually going to get killed before it gets anything down. So 440 doing a great job slowing things down the best they can and just gobbling up the map as they're still sitting very close in supply. And this lane of the game, that's yeah. not what you want. <laughs> I see a lot of lurkers in the production tab, which is going to make it hard for uh, NGZ to go for any kind of big doom push. You know, if it's like just Lings and Hydras, like those can kind of melt a lot easier, but like big old lurker fields are really tough to push down cost effectively. Well, Storm's a bit cost effective all series long here for our Bros player. He's getting fantastic ones. Yeah. Lanes get cleaned up immediately. Trying to punch these lurkers to death, the detection is there, but taking some free damage. See if the focus fires a little bit slow in some spots, but still clears out that army. Gonna be able to move forward here. And we'll see if Pros is gonna keep trying to attack or maybe go for, to fight that third and get themselves another base they wanna take instead. And I see another Ultra Cavern. Drone. Uh, that's the that's the uh, ultra armor upgrade. The part oh, of the here is that uh, Zerk has Zerk has a little bit too many drones. We had 65 drones and only 120 supplies, so Zerk has not a lot of army on the map. Uh, they hopefully have the ability to make a lot of army soon, but uh, at the moment, kind of kind of low in army supply. Uh, this push could be very dangerous. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of Hydras in production. He's upgrading into all this Ultralist stuff, but hasn't actually made any Ultralists yet. So, you know, maybe that's going to be the surprise. But again, the minerals are just so dry for the Zerg here. Not going to be able to do anything. Frost finds a base up at 12 o'clock, which killing hatchery is always nice, but there's no money here. And the already saw a position. That 6 o'clock base is going to get counterattacked by the Zerg instead. That's going to be eliminated here. And I think that Frost is definitely on the worst side of this, because now they only have one functional base. Yeah, I think the only question remaining is whether Zerg can ever stop this ball for the Protoss, because if this army goes down, I think there's nothing left. Uh, oh, and walking into like six Lurkers is one way to do it. Oh, man. That's so many dead Zealots. Yeah, even gonna with storm the detection. Away, <laughs> even gonna with storm the away our detection, too. Uh, but this is, a, this is still a scary Protoss army. We have 11 High Templar here. That is Danger Zone. Uh... Now, Zerg doesn't have to hold on to their Nat to live, uh, but it certainly makes the game a little harder if they don't. Hey, we're seeing a lot of lanes on the way. I think you just buy time the best you can. See how good these storms are. Finally, first Ultra does show up now that Kainus armor Ultralist. is done here. Storm? Only okay against Ultralists, surprisingly enough. I mean, it's still a lot of Archon. Pretty good guns. against Hydras. 
I just, yeah, I think this is gonna get cleaned up. And NGZ agrees, gonna, gonna tap out. Yeah, I wonder if what part of that is maybe a little bit of the lack of the map knowledge, because it felt like the spot for Pros wasn't that bad, but never wanted to take that next base. Kept committing to the attacks, and even like that attack on the 12, that base has been long dried up at that point, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the. I'm not sure what the decision was. I mean, maybe the idea was that, you know, if they're always planning on pushing through that location anyway, then it's the natural place to try to establish a base and some cannons. But, uh, yeah, it didn't, didn't quite work out. Ooh, and it looks like we're going to get Polaris first this time around. <laughs> yeah, so it was just some wild cards doing whatever they want, because you're here at CPL to learn StarCraft, not how to follow rules, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's okay. No big deal. The game type is one on one, so hopefully the colors are nice because I'm not going to have the option to shift tab. Always quick PSA. Just... Play top versus bottom all the time, guys. <laughs> was one on one not let you shift tab? Dang. I'm, nope. I'm gonna... Rip. But that's okay. That means we're just going to get into our next set of games. We're going to be having such a good time casting a bunch of tier zero tonight. So let's switch that over. Start the next set here. In the top left, in the Magenta Protoss, it's too sexy for you. And in the bottom right, in the Terran, uh, in the blue, <laughs> in the Terran, uh, in the blue, we have IRK Royal Blue playing Terran. Yeah, yeah, avoiding the jokes himself because everyone's like, why isn't he playing blue? He's a traitor. But finally picking it for once seems like it's going to be reasonably okay. Uh, all right, Royal Blue is one of the reasons I wanted to cast this set. I love watching this play. It tends to be a little more macro focused, a little more let's take it into the mid game, like not do any kind of crazy shenanigans and. Especially on some of these maps, like Polaris, for example, seeing how he actually plays it out, if he can successfully get to that point where you get that big maxed army, that 2-1 push. Like, curious if you can actually get there or not, or if our pro hero is going to be, you know, doing their shenanigans and stealing some games. Yeah, I mean, when I think about Polaris with all these, like, bridges and elevation changes going on, this seems like the kind of map where siege tanks are really good. Uh... I don't know. I don't know what Protoss's plan is. If this, if these kinds of games go late, I feel like this is maybe the kind of map where you want to go for carriers because there's all these like bridges and stuff. But uh, it's really just being careful. In my experience, anyway, it's it's being careful with where you put your army because either side going across those bridges tends to be like asking for death. Because like okay, like there's gonna be mines and tanks for the pro side, but you're also like one good stasis away from cutting off your army forever. So like, I feel like it's just avoiding the bridges in general and playing that slow, patient, methodical push. So arbiters can really abuse like if your opponent's out of position because if they're rushing back to defend, they're gonna go across those bridges. X out and doesn't look like we got anything too crazy going on for you know no gates in the center or anything. Uh, both building a both building a uh, a Vespian gas mining facility, so that uh, <laughs> would indicate that the game might go a little longer. <laughs> I mean, it's quite possible here. It's not like the first week when we had players that it was just cheese, cheese, cheese. But I think people did either didn't have enough time to learn a map or had no interest in it. But now that we're a little more in season, you're gonna have to play it. You're gonna have to learn it. So people maybe looking to play the more standard game here now. Maybe so. what you want to learn how to do is cheese. Uh, <laughs> looks like, uh, yeah, just a supply depot there. Still, still nothing super interesting build defining coming out for either player just yet. SCV is going to get in, see what's going on. Note that it is not much at the moment. <laughs> it is not much. And with the first factory start, we are seeing the guys pulled out of the gas, usually indicating a fast expansion. So like I was saying, Royal Blue likes to get into that mid game, get to a comfortable spot and... Not getting an early CC would kind of hamper that. <laughs> True facts. And this uh, this Marine looks like his position to prevent this probe from getting in and seeing anything it's not supposed to. Uh, do have Dragoon range going down for the Protoss, so probably not likely to be anything particularly cheeky. No, nothing unusual here from a Protoss player. The fact that they haven't started second gate or any kind of tech yet... I mean, that's if you did just leave the base, I guess you would wait at that point, but should be a pretty reasonably time just getting that Nexus up instead. So we'll see if they're saving up if they're going to keep that constant unit production. Marines are going to fan out, kill that scouting thing, and does not see the CC, but you saw the SCV, you should be able to assume what's going down. 
Yeah, I think at that point it's it's pretty pretty safe to assume. Could confirm with the dragoon, maybe. I don't really know if that's worth it though. Well, I mean, well, you, especially you get once you in. I mean, you, you do want to. Up. You do want to be sure of what's going on, not getting faked out into some kind of two-factor or anything. But yeah, I could see a two sides for you if they're trying to be cautious. They're gonna wait till they have dragoon range either finished or close before they start poking out. Then they can start abusing like if there's a lack of a bunker, force of repairs, you know, whatever kind of small aggression you want to do here. But right now, keeping them back at home, you want to deny that scouting info. Makes sense, and the scouting info is in the process of being denied. SCV goes down, doesn't get a chance to get up into the main. It saw what it needed to see, see, though. It saw yeah, the nexus and the, the timing. That's what you're looking for. <laughs> which is good. In the main, we do have a robo facility going down, which I think is pretty standard, right? It's like a oh yeah, it's normal, very normal thing to get right now. Yeah, my. Vegas would pay me one dollar on my hundred bet would be that we're adding on <laughs> two more gateways and getting a third nexus for easily fast arbor. <laughs> hey, there's those gateways. <laughs> <laughs> Wowie, I wonder what could be coming after that. I mean, it's uh, just, it's especially when you don't have the good scouting info, if you're not planning to put on aggression, see what your opponent's doing, you have to keep your unit production up reasonably in case it is some kind of like no upgrade, really a fast push. And you don't want to get caught off guard. You're going to get the observers to see what the Terran plan is before you commit to anything. We do see these couple triggers moving out now that range is complete, but it is the observer on the way, eBay uh, being made, and a second machine shop. So Royal Blue probably going to just grind out bunch of tanks get really set up in uh in position back at home to be defensive or maybe they add on a bunch of vultures and start taking map control but i'm kind of expecting more of a turtley style building up on two base what are the options for terran if you want to go with like a pre-upgrade push i feel like i'm familiar with like the five and six facts like plus one timings like the big timings well like if we were if we were seeing like no armory just gonna attack with a bunch of stuff, there'd be more factories already. So that that yeah. is not the choice that we're going for here. But yeah, it would just be like how many factories are you adding, how many machine shops you have, and uh, are you trying to actually get any upgrades? Like getting the plus one is nice, but if you want to just really try to punish your opponent, especially if they take that third base too quickly. That's kind of what they're looking for here. Royal Blue is going to gear out and move out a little bit here. If you can find some kind of opportunity to do some damage, it's always nice. And you see the way they're moving. Like I was saying, you don't go across these bridges. It's a death trap. So he already knows how to move around this map, taking the, this much safer route where your opponent's not going to just be watching everything. He's, these goons are pretty spread out right now for Too Sexy for you. Uh, I wonder if that might be uh, a problem. Well, it's he covered yeah, like, all the to... he's covering all the ways that you can see Terran move out, so you know where you gotta be. You see, the moment he sees the move out, he's retreating them all back home. So he's, he's he knows Maybe. what he's trying to do here. Looks like the third will at least be a little bit delayed by the fact that the Terran army is here. I'm gonna take out a goon too. Uh, yeah. I don't know the siege mode is done yet. No, it's actually still in production, so can't quite like set up shop on this ridge. Just gonna tickle that probe, just like show him who's boss, but then uh, then leave again. You leave him alive so you can go back home and tell exactly. him what you saw. Exactly. <laughs> Send a message. Ooh, these goons do move forward, get one tank killed, but they're trying to fight out here in the middle. I know it's speed vultures. Do they have the mines though? They do, but they're not really laying them. Looking for the great opportunity, moves too far forward. Jurgen's gonna be able to reflect that without too much issue. And now with the vultures Ooh. gone, these tanks are gonna have to retreat. Some reinforcements heading up. Can these be the mines that are good? There's an observer here, though. Shouldn't be anything. Siege mode does finish. Tuesday Fury is going to start taking damage. Has to be very careful. This is really going to make it a pain. He has to take a third. And Sexy for you is just going to take the 9 o'clock instead. Probe gets popped, too. Sad face. No message sent. Uh, meanwhile, back at the ranch, we got a plus one attack on the way for the Terran. Uh, and just <laughs> making a good, good chunk of... Uh, a good chunk of vultures. It's the Terran base, the ranch. Is that what we're calling it? Yeah, man. They're the, they're the space cowboys. It's the ranch. Ooh, uh, look at Royal Blue now. He's adding a lot of factories once he started. So maybe he's actually going to be gearing up for that plus one push on uh, two bases oh. instead of taking the third one. Definitely a little bit surprising to see. So I'll be curious if he does. The vult a couple of vultures got to the main doing everything they possibly can. Subtle is get finished up, so I think both sides just kind of gearing up, not really attacking too hard or too quickly, so it shouldn't be able to do anything. But a nice little move from Royal Blue to get some scouting info. 
he gets in the base, he doesn't see an Arbiter Tribunal. That's all you're kind of looking for. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and good, good mines getting set up here for the vultures. And yeah, I don't see, yeah, four more factories in production. Looks like three of which are going to finish very soon. Makes it seem like this is likely to be like a big plus one timing, I would guess. That's that would be my guess as well. Working on Academy gets scanned, so Ooh. you can see Zealot dropping on this tank. Oh, oh no, nice. rip tank. Okay, and that's gonna be able to clear out some of these mines and kind of see what they can do here. See if Frost wants to take that third base, and these vultures immediately just going off to the next base and mining up, just trying to be as annoying as possible. With a Citadel on the way, this could be for Zealot Legs, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is going to be that move forward to start working towards Arbiters. I feel like that's the tech you want to go here. Stasis seems so strong on a map where you have a lot of tight chokes that you can catch your opponent on. Yeah, for sure. Um, I know, so like, I feel like the, the three major options that I hear about for Protoss are you can either go Arbiters, you can go Carriers, or you can go like lots of Shuttles and High Templar. At the CPL level, do players tend to just like pick one and stick with it? Or I'd say at CPL would you level, want they want to be able to want to be able to like do all of those things. <laughs> well, in the same way, it's like at the CPL level, do you see people going like two hatch and three hatch muta and lurker? No, they tend to pick one and practice it up. And the some of the some of the builds like going carriers is a little more map dependent. It's a little more like your opponent like depending on how well they can react to it and everything. Three base arbiter is just clean you can always do it it's always going to give you the power you're looking for you can make it work kind of everywhere so that's why you see that much more often than anything else as far as cpl pro play goes makes sense uh and yeah these uh these factories are starting to fire up their production at this point plus one is just about done uh and it looks like we're not producing scbs anymore either so I would expect that Terran's going to move out soon enough. Maybe right now. Well, they're going to go for it here. And actually, the Vultures have a window where they can sneak across the bridges. But too sexy for you. Like I said, they didn't tech super hard or super fast. They're working towards Temple Archive now, but no Stargate behind it. And they're building up a good army. So it's not like they're going to be really caught in a bad position. It's just going to be where can Royal Blue get without any kind of being contested. And the fact that they're already in the middle of the map... Plenty of units here, vultures and tanks, everything you're looking for here. And that uh, charm booster upgrade is on the way here. There's a nice flank already kind of pre-set up here. Tanks are going to siege, and some of them are on the low ground, so we'll see if there's going to be some kind of move from the two sex for you to just slow us down, or is he going to try to fight it? Yeah, I mean, I think the nice thing for Terran now is once you're on this high ground here, there's only one, uh, there's there's no like elevation changes in not in your favor all the way to the natural, but oh. might be just trying to shut up shop here and besiege the third. Well, I think Tuz actually doesn't want to let this happen. He's got a lot of Zells coming, but he's about to finish as well, and he's got the shuttle. He's going to move in before these turrets get in place. He's attacking from multiple angles here. The tank spread's pretty decent, but it's enough for us units. The Zealot leg's kicking in. They're going to be able to move forward onto these tanks. The Vulture's doing the best they can, but it's just not enough DPS to clean these out, and this Terran army is going to get wiped off the map. Big win from Too Sexy for you. Goes from down 20, uh, like, up a decent amount of supply, but manages to reset all the army count. And now Royal Blue's going to figure out, can he defend this third he's trying to take? Yeah. Uh, luckily, it does have the starport already, so presumably you can get the science facility and the other upgrades soon enough. But, uh, you know, like, we don't have 2-1 in production. Don't have a third done yet. Uh... Protoss is only just now, it looks like, about to take their fourth, so not, like, way behind economically, but, uh... Well, they're not going to, though. <laughs> danger, no. Oh, no. These Good are try to... Uh, but Protoss putting, putting Zealots back in the shuttle. Might be might be thinking about getting frisky on this, uh, this third base of Terran. Did lose all the tanks, so... What you see is what you get on tanks in the production tab right now. There's like two that exist. A lot of mines on this high ground here. Yeah, we're going to be very careful how to engage this. Arbiter Tribunal's on the way. These vultures are going to pop off, and they're going to get a couple Zell kills for free. It's not so bad. And you see Terran's going to try to run away. Can't really go too far anywhere. They're going to run down to the bottom, see if they can escape and get anything done. 
There's a little Vulture Hit Squad up by the 12. Might be a good chance to get some nice counter attack damage because there's no cans or anything at the natural. Could be a big opportunity there. That is true. The Arbiter House, though, is halfway done. <laughs> and, uh... You and your Arbiter Dens and everything's a den. <laughs> yeah, it's an Arbiter Den. Makes sense. Uh, and gonna clear out these mines uh, relatively uncontested. Zealots are not the best at clearing mines, but they get the job done. Uh, not the way you want to, though, but yeah, gonna clear them out, but that does buy Rogue the plenty of time to get in position to defend this 6 o'clock. Lots of siege tanks, a little bit spread out as well, and tons of vultures. You can see even a little bit of an attack from the side. So if these vultures gotta scout what's up here, there's not a lot of zealots, so Rogue Blue should be feeling pretty comfortable about the defense here. Yeah, I don't think that uh, Protoss can get in here, not with all these vultures sitting on top of the tanks like that. Uh, it looks like too sexy for you, agrees. Just gonna back off for now. Not exactly like way up in supply or anything, only three bases. Does have a good chunk more probes and stasis on the way. Oh, this is way better for Terran. The fact that he got the third base up, Pros hasn't taken a fourth or a fifth. Or the Arbiter tech is like, be, get online now. It wasn't online already at this point. And the supply is not a big in the lead for the Pros. So really everything's looking pretty good for Royal. As long as he stays in a good position to defend. And you just got to know where your opponent's going to try to move. It seems like if they're going to attack somewhere, it would be the six. It has the biggest place to move through. That seems like the best avenue, but you can see he's pretty turtled up there. We'll see if two seconds of you wants to do instead. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be quite hard for Protoss to attack in the natural. There's only these like two entrances. They're real, real tiny. Uh, it looks like Terran's thinking about just trying to retake this high ground. Uh, not a bad call. It's also going to help them secure that bottom left base, which getting the double gas income for Terran sounds like it would be pretty good. But we are seeing Arbiters on the way. Two Nexus in production up at the 12 and in that little middle base. Both mineral only, so unfortunately. So he's going to need more gas income at some point. I'm surprised Perus hasn't even poked up at that top right. It was just the three vultures that cleared it out ages ago. So I'm a little bit surprised to see that. But you know what? He, it's go not going anywhere. You're not in a particular rush. But yep. if you wait too long for Terran to get to that max army to get these upgrades moving as plus two is nearing completion, it get uh, it can get real troublesome to take a good fight. Yeah, quite dangerous. Plus, uh, Terran has uh, science us a lot now as well, so just one arbor is not maybe as scary as it could be. And I don't I don't see one yet. This will be the first arbor popping in a minute here, and it won't have mana for stasis for a little while. Not for a little while, and there is the EMP. It's already been researched, so. Definitely going to be able to shoot that down, but this vessel moved pretty far forward, taking big damage from these Dragoons, but the fight goes on. D-Matrix used. vessel. <laughs> yeah, well you can see a little bit of a poke forward from Terran. Uh, Protoss mostly clears it up without too much issue, but the Royal Blue still controls that high ground area. He has an SUV down at the bottom left, but not trying to take that base just yet. Inching forward, trying to get more control of this area. Wants to put pressure on that 9 o'clock base. Two seconds for you. He's got plenty of army here, though, with more reinforcements. I wonder if Royal Blue can actually break through on this attack. Yeah, it seems like a dangerous place for uh, for Terran to be. Uh, once this like sort of vulture buffer gets cleared out and the zealots get on the tanks, uh, this whole army could melt really quickly, and uh, Royal Blue might not have much of a chance after that. First Arbiter has arrived. Doesn't have enough mana for anything, but just the cloaking's annoying. Uh, might just die to Goliaths, though. Arbiters are okay of doing that. Yeah, I mean, it barely gets away. Almost has an energy for that first stasis, but again, both sides resetting a lot of unit count. Pros definitely got the worst end of the trade. They had a much bigger supply count. If you look back at home, they got a good gateway count, but given how many bases they have, it's, it could be a little bit stronger here. I think actually making all these facilities on this base might be difficult. And we are seeing another CC started that bottom left finally for Royal Blue. So. There are still eight tanks for Terran, plus two more in production, so tank count's not that minimal if Terran can get them all together. Uh, meanwhile, uh, second Arbiter is out, and I think the third one should be coming soon. Actually, I have two Stargates available to produce Arbiters as well, so should be able to get those out uh, reasonably quick. Yeah, I mean... Especially if you can manage to, because you can see how Royal Blue is defending. He's got everything parked in one location. Observer does see that this uh, lower left base is trying to be taken here. Royal Blue is really contesting, make sure that's a hard area to take. So a big recall in the main would be huge right now. Like that could be like yeah. devastatingly big damage. Royal Blue has managed to add on more production back at home as well. 
As Farage is just trying to build up their army near that max and then maybe look to take another attack now that there is a couple Arbiters and they're getting a chance to build up some of their energy. Mm -hmm. EMP though? No? Maybe? Thinking about it? Oh, that would have been so good. They were ecstatically just sitting there. That would have been a monster EMP if we managed to get that one off. Indeed. Um, but Aaron's now kind of besieged this uh, this this pocket base for Protoss. Looks like Protoss has something to say about that. EMP's going to go down. Going to miss. Uh, no stasis just yet. There's one. Stasis on some backline tanks. Uh, and it looks like the Zealots might just overrun without those three tanks in the back. Most I'm... of the Zealots are gone, but the uh, Dragoons are pushing in now, and another stasis goes off, sectioning off another tank. And I think that might be the end of this part of the Terran army. Yeah, I think that's enough to at least alleviate the pressure, kind of slow things down here. Royal Blue's going to have to get back and build everything back up. If he wants to try to rescue these units, I guess that's an option, but I don't know if you, that's what you're looking to do here. You can see Royal you Blue's actually slacking on the production. eventually. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be hard to defend, though. You can see it's sexy for you. It's really, like, reinforced. Like, no, these units are killed. I got it. But, <laughs> like, we're at almost at 20 minutes now. There's still been no attempt for Pro to go to that top right base to get the double gas, to take anything else. They've been comfortable on the base they have, which the mains mind out. They took mineral-only bases, so you can see that gas is actually starting to become a problem with this tube arbiter uh, production. Yeah, uh, Protoss for now just comfortable with only three gas bases, but that's uh, it's not a whole lot. Might be able to clear out these tanks though, D-Matrix is clutch, but uh, nothing here shoots up as well, so these Arbiters can just sit here and be annoying. How long does it take one Arbiter to kill a tank, Sage Zero, do you know? Forever. Like, actually forever. forever. Yeah, it, yeah. It does, just, it does 10 damage a shot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does 10 damage a shot, I don't even know if it's typeless. Uh, it probably How is not. You, uh... How do you how do you feel about the idea that you could uh, buff Protoss by removing the Arbiter's attack? I would like that. <laughs> that, would <be> good. <laughs> that would definitely be a buff. Be pretty good. <laughs> Protoss has enough army to manage to get into this bottom right base, force the CC to lift off, and Royal Blue is now at a pretty big supply deficit. That uh, fight he lost trying to put pressure on that nine o'clock base ended up being kind of the downfall. He lost too much army there. He's having trouble kind of rebuilding it. Natural's just now mining out as well, uh, so only one mining base, and it is that mineral only. Um, so we've got some vultures doing some counter-attack uh, counter damage, that's a bit about the best you're going to get in this spot, just by time be annoying. A lot of vultures moving out here, but Royal Blue, like, if you look at his factory, he's got a big factory count, he still has two machine shops. And that's kind of, at this yeah. point, that's just not going to, if you lose your entire army, that's just not going to give you what you need to fight back. So I see just nothing but vultures here. Burning through all the money trying to make something on the map. But Proas is capped out here. Re recall is research. They can go for that whenever they want. They're just parked in the middle of the map. They're feeling comfortable. If they can keep Royal Blue off another gas base, Royal Blue is going to run out of options very quick. Yeah, I mean, vultures can be out here being annoying on the map, but, I mean, even this last mineral only is mining out pretty soon for our Terran player. And uh, once once that's gone, uh, it's very, very hard to keep up the War of Attrition. Oh, well, a lot of vultures are going to go in the 12th. Free. <laughs> yeah, they are not free. They're just cheap. A lot of vultures going to the 12th to kill a couple cans, trying to get some probe kills, and a little time of reinforcement should be enough to clean this up as it's too nice for you. It's not going to just let that base die for free. But he has not moved that central army. That is just parked and comfortable. And observers seeing what's going on, and we're seeing the big move out. Lots of ground armies that are subtle with a zealot in it, but enough arbiters to stasis, do whatever you want as you put more pressure on that six o'clock base. Yeah, and it looks like there's just almost no army left here from Terran. There's some vultures that are spread out around the map, but they're not home to defend. Uh, gonna stasis these tanks in the back. And I just don't think there's anything left for Terran to defend their last mining base. And yeah, not really anything here. This is, like, too important here. Couldn't manage to get another base off online. Maybe if they took the 3 o'clock, just forced Sexy Free's army to go to a completely different side of the map. Maybe there's some way to kind of like, worm your way out of this game. But I think at this point, the decision's been made. Royal Blue's going to tap out of game one. And 2 seconds for you, showing why I think everyone hates playing against Brodos, because there wasn't anything exceptional, but it got the win very cleanly. <laughs> We did have a did have an arbiter die to a missile turret there. So if anyone had that on their uh, PVT bingo, we can cross that one off. You're not allowed to fill bingo things in the last like minute of the match. That's like, at the point where you just don't care anymore. It's not bingo worthy. It doesn't count. 
Always gotta play bingo. Always for the bingo. Oh, yeah. I need to actually do that sometime, make a card. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like PVT, PVT and PVZ both run long enough in CPL that you could, you could fill out a good amount of your bingo card. Uh, probably. We're going into game two, see if we get another long game from these two players, or if we can see more aggression as we add more bases to the mix. In the top right, in the blue terrain, it's IRK Royal Blue. And in the top left, in the yellow Protoss, it is too sexy for you. Yep. So, Polypoid. How do you feel about PVT on Polypoid compared to Polaris? I mean, to me, this seems like a map is way, way more like open fight in the middle. Yeah, I don't I don't like playing against Protoss on this map, or against Terran on this map, I should say. Um, all those little high ground ridges and variations and great spots to park an army and make it impossible to attack seems pretty good for Terran. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, uh, like the near third base, like the, third, the mineral only third base seems like uh, it's basically free for a player who gets to make siege tanks, so that, uh, that seems good. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like you would probably see uh, just like a much more engagement heavy game here because like there's not the same degree of like bridges that are going to make fights not possible and take much more direct routes. Yeah, I, would, I, I think so. I think just really as a prize player, I'm happy anytime I get to play this matchup on a four player map so I get that second main, all the extra building space for gateways and stuff later on. And knowing that if your opponent eventually wants to get enough bases, there's going to be some avenue you could sneak an Arbiter in, you could sneak some shuttles in. Like, it gets harder to spread out for Terran, but as far as, like, if they get a push going with all the high ground variation, like, their push could be very, very scary. So, I don't know overall if I like the map or not, but it definitely could be annoying. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh... And it uh, looks like we're going to see pretty much the same as what we saw last time, at least thus far. Both taking a gas. Nobody, you know, still no gateways in the middle of the map. Uh... Yeah, I, I mean, at this level, you assume the Terran players know the building place. But you can see, like, I could, I'll channel my inner to blind. I think you'd be very proud of this little box. It's like the ultimate, like, anti-zealot, the get out of my base kind of micro box that you can just navigate Marines through at, like, freely. So, like, if you go for any kind of early zealot pressure and your opponent knows how to defend it against it better, I think you could see, like, it will be so much harder. Royal Blue Disney just have to scout the middle. He doesn't even care. Yeah, and he actually go. always scouted the bottom right and then returning home. That's interesting. Nice. Uh, maybe you know just knows by the scout timing at this point, with since that probe showed up. Maybe. That's just that. That's like a little tiny optimization that I don't think I've really ever seen, or maybe at least don't ever really notice. Now that refiner's been done, but I don't think the gas immediately got picked up here. I don't know if this is an intentional timer. Maybe getting a little bit distracted here. It looks like actually they're not even gonna start have the factory start. They're gonna go for a very quick CC and see if two X for you he knows how to punish it. Yeah, uh, I think I heard about some Terrans explaining this. It was like a like a hybrid almost between your gasless and uh, like factory epi. It's like you you take the gas, but you only mine some of it. I oh. think it's supposed to be reasonably safe. I mean, it seems like it would give you kind of jump start to make sure you get the factories at a reasonable time. Maybe there's some kind of critical upgrade you're looking for. I'm not really sure. We'll see how it pans out. But still, that means it's a very quick CC start faster than the Nexus. And we'll see if two seconds for you knows what's going on. He pokes forward with the Dragoon. I don't know if he actually poked forward enough to confirm the CC or when it got started. Because the bunker kind of dissuaded him. Yeah, and uh, the Nexus going down. Going to be a little behind the command center. Is that a pylon? Okay, I heard some start warping in. I was like, oh man, what is it? Uh, and that that poke should be far enough in at this point that that Dragoon can now see that this command center is going down and that it's almost done, so should know what's up. Second factory going down as well. Yeah, he started the two factories pretty quickly after taking this CC, so I think having that extra gas early on really lets you kind of jumpstart your production, even if it ends up only just being vultures early on. And two seconds for you, it doesn't look like they're gearing up to immediately take another base behind this. They are still getting the Robo and Observer. They're probably going to still add on the extra gateway, so not really trying to change up the build. So Royal Blue's choice here seems to put them in a better spot than in game one, taking a nice little free advantage. 
yeah, uh, seems seems good to you know be able to get like a slightly more economical opening going. Um, getting that eBay as well, so going to be safe. I noticed this last time uh, Royal Blue was pretty prompt at putting down uh, missile turrets, so I'm guessing that's going to be the same thing here. Don't want to die to any KP boy shenanigans. Oh, this scouting yeah, SCP gets in. Yeah, all the way in, big. unfortunately. Got to see the gateways, the robo, everything you're looking for right now is to know your point is playing a normal game with no shenanigans behind it. Finally gets killed off here, but not before I got all the good information. But Royal Blue got to be feeling real good here, and I wouldn't be surprised to see an armory come up pretty soon because when you do this kind of opening, I think it's going to be hard to really put the pressure on. But we'll see what Royal Blue ends up choosing to do themselves. Yeah, and getting both uh, getting both Vulture upgrades and making three tanks. So could presumably see like a repeat of the same pushout that we saw, although with this ridge being in between your base and uh, Protoss' Nat, that could uh, pose some difficulty for the Terran army. Few Dragoons on that ridge. Well, it depends if, because you see two sacks for you, he's not really pushed forward. He's not trying to abuse that. In the same way that it's like these uh, ridges could help, the shorter distance is not going to give time for two sexy for you. He's going to move forward with these three tanks. True. It's just two goons. The high ground advantage is going to be a little bit helpful, but he's going to slow this push down. The observer's moving across the map. He's going to try to see what he can find out here, but Royal Blue is just moving forward, has a couple SUVs to help repair, and two sacks for you is kind of play, putting their foot in the sand to get ready to defend. But with an armory behind this, this isn't any kind of real commit attack, just if you can get something, nice. Eight goons, though. That seems like a lot. I don't know that uh, Terran's going to be able to set up shop like last time. Although, the SCV linebackers are doing their job holding yeah. back these goons. Yeah, but this is a tank already lost. Second one goes down right behind it as well. The mines are going to be able to slow things down, but the observers are already made, so it's a slow down, not a stop moving it at me here. Royal Blue lost some units behind this. Still trying to make vultures as well, so can't even really replenish this tank count that got dwindled down. So the good defense from Too Sexy for You should be in a good spot here, and you can see he just pulls back, hopefully to not do too much damage from these vultures that managed to sneak their way around. Beaky vultures sneaking around through the that uh, 12 o'clock base, but not gonna be able to do too much. Uh, and already a uh, third base coming up for too sexy for you. And Citadel and Forge and all the good, all the good stuff. Yeah, lot, lots of good stuff on the way with uh, the Citadel. I'm like, like you were asking before, is like, what kind of builds do you do? That's why you usually see three gate or three base arbiters. Seems very easy to kind of get into. You can see he's working on the tech path. Wouldn't see any real reason why not to do it again. And World Blue's gonna have to kind of sit back and gear up here. But they are working on their first plus one. Siege is on the way as well. And you can see it's just the vultures trying to be annoying, but they can't even really delay this twelve o'clock, not nearly the same way that he did on Polaris with that top right base. Yeah. Uh I think It'll also be interesting to see whether Too Sexy For You gets their Arbiter earlier, because in the last game it felt like the Arbiters took quite a while to show up. Um, didn't, weren't there for the push. But I don't know if we're going to see, well, maybe we are going to see the same kind of push. we got two more factories going down, um, but I would expect we'd want at least one more for any kind of like big plus one push. No, last game I think it was six. It's like he yeah. added on, like he waited a while to just slam down like four factories at the same time because they're just there for vultures to reinforce. He saved the money to build your tank up early, but says so he's not really trying to do that too like too much investment here. I would expect to see him, like you're saying, that third base with the mineral so almost free to take. I wouldn't be surprised to see that. And then we just see vultures moving around the map, make sure there's no crazy shenanigans taking a second main or anything. But there Stargate, is that you see. 30 CC is on the way, and a Stargate's in production as well, up at the front of the base. No Templar Archives to follow it just yet, I assume they get to add it on at some point. Unless he's trying to be a fun boy, but since he's not researching air weapons, I don't think it's carriers either. Should just be Arbiters eventually. What if it's just like one scout? Then I'm turning the stream off, we're not watching <laughs> <laughs> I don't know man, there's, uh, there's no Goliaths here. One scout just flies in, harasses the enemy. Yeah, it, it tickles. Or, what it tickles are you, what are you gonna so you do? Make, it, you, it tickles you. Maybe kills one worker until a Goliath gets made. 
And there is our Templar Archives. Got a leg speed coming down as well. Um, and it looks like Terran is soon going to be pushing up onto the high ground where their third base will be. Uh, yeah, we're also seeing a faster store. Yeah, this is a spot where I see Terrans get busted a lot on this map. Is like having the third grant, third base high ground is good, but getting onto it isn't always easy. If Protoss like sets up shop here, how do you feel about that? Well, I think that Royal Blue's got enough muscle that if he wanted to, he could because so sexy for you is not far enough. He's not trying to control; he's staying back at home. Because Royal Blue's been throwing out a couple vultures here, a couple vultures there. Little kind of little harassment kind of style attacks that makes you not want to posture so far forward here. This Protoss army is pretty intimidating. It's just not in position. Yeah, um, and getting a little, little bit behind in the worker count, it seems. Terran's up to 57 SCVs, and uh, Protoss only has the 45 probes. Which is a little surprising to me because they've had the third base for longer. But uh, Terran now going to take their third base, and with about a dozen siege tanks, I think that. Once they get up on it, they'll be safe, although here come the goons. Yeah, the observer was there. Fast reaction for two seconds for you to move forward here. And Royal Blue didn't have enough things forward, didn't try to take... He took the CC first instead of trying to take the units first, and unfortunately cannot control that ground. It's going to take a big damage here. It shouldn't lose the CC, we're going to have to repair it. We see attack, keep moving forward here. But these Tank tanks... Tank way too deep to engage. Yeah, there we go. Protoss is going to decide to pull back <laughs> rather than engage on... What's that? Seven tanks up the ramp? Yeah, that's uh, that's not breakable, I don't think. Two hundred supply of dragoons does not kill seven tanks up a ramp. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna talk about high ground advantage and how <laughs> racially unbiased it is towards my four <laughs> poor dragoons. But still, that's a nice little defense, but Royal Blue still hasn't taken that third base. He's got the CC ready. You see the Vultures being pretty active, mining out a bunch of spots. And a, they did kill a, a, a probe that was at that mineral base to try to slow down the next base. A couple yeah, Zealots going to no. try to go through, but a tank hit and a couple Vultures might be able to clean this up as well. So they're doing a great job to delaying things the best they can and adding on a ton of factories now. So we see Royal Blue really gearing up. If you're not going to let me take my base, I'm going to gear up with an army and I'll take the fight to you. Yeah, and no, uh, no fourth. Fourth base just going down now. And uh, are these Dragoons stuck? I think these Dragoons are stuck. We've now put pylons in place. There we go. I was like, Dragoons cannot get through that. <laughs> no. They're really big. <laughs> I don't know exactly what the unit sizes are, but I'm, I'm reasonably sure a Dragoon cannot get through a pylon next to a Stargate. No, that was just to stop the... Because Royal Blue just kept setting, like, two vultures every so often to do, like, a little harassment. So he's like, I'll wall it off, fine. <laughs> it's like he's just tired of yeah. dealing with it. I, seen I think it was, uh... Maybe Tim was telling me there's, like... There's there's some combination of pylon and... Like, maybe, like, maybe like shield battery over pylon or shield battery over forge. Just, like, not even ultralist proof. You could, like, make a wall that looks like a wall and then just not actually have it be a wall. Just hope that Terran doesn't try it. <laughs> Well, I don't think that's going to dissuade you from losing like a hundred bucks of vultures. So you just, you'll just try yeah, it anyway. Yeah. Vultures, vultures <laughs> are so cheap. Uh, speaking of vultures being so cheap, we got a lot of them in production now. Royal Blue up to nine factories, I believe. Uh, got all the SCVs they're going to want this game. So uh, it could be push time soon. What's the upgrades at? Looks like one. Uh, was that one one or? Yeah, one one yeah, with the with two two on the way at this point. So, like, it's gonna be a strong Terran army when it gets to that point here, and you get to see it's trying to reinforce a lot of the vultures, trying to be active, make sure that Pro is not getting a lot of bases, not really getting enough speed. But armor tech is done. I don't know what's actually researched, but you can start making them, start building up the energy, and a good staser too. We saw it last time. That's all you really need to turn away a fight that you had no business winning. Exactly. We do have one arbor on the field with what is this? A hundred for stasis? I don't know how much Protoss spells cost, except that storm costs seventy-five. It, it, yeah, it's a it's a hundred it's a hundred for stasis and one fifty for recall. One fifty for recall. I was pretty sure on the one fifty for recall. So yeah, uh, one stasis available, assuming it has been researched, which is an assumption. <laughs> I hadn't didn't see it, but it's a pretty quick one to research, right? Like, isn't it fast enough to like you usually want to get the arbiters before you even bother researching it 
you would start the Arbiter first, because by the time it's done, you still won't have the 100 energy. Yeah. So you'd start your Arbiter, then get Stasis, then get Recalls, the way you want to be doing it. Makes sense. Uh, meanwhile, Terran's just, uh... Terran's gonna max out on Vultures. Looks like Stasis isn't done. It's just now starting, <laughs> so... These Arbiters are, at the moment, just uh, providers of Cloak. And... 10 damage in the air to anything. Yeah, they ha they have a super, a super soaker attached to their cloaking field. It's pretty nice. They you do. Know? Yeah. But Shoots up and down. Yeah, it, does, it shouldn't shoot anywhere. It just doesn't do anything. <laughs> we, are, we are seeing another Nexus down the bottom, right? And it looks like Royal Blue's setting up in position like they want to take that third base. Terran on four bases, every Peros knows this is just a nightmare to start dealing with. So you so active with these vultures, trying to find anything they can. It's too sexy for you, moving out with a little tiny force, trying to poke if you can get into the middle of the map. But all these vultures go down to the lower left base. It's going to be one cannon. That's not quite enough to fight off all these vultures. Trying to make more wall behind this, doing whatever they can. But it's time for the army to come down here, make sure these vultures don't do all the damage in the world. But there are at least some mines. There's an opportunity for something to happen from this small investment. Actually, it's yeah. like 12 Vultures. That's not a small investment anymore. Yeah, and that costs a whole 900 minerals, I think. I for for, for a, a family fun pack at the most broken unit in the game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a whole control group. Uh, does Terran actually have the CC done, or are they just posturing at the space for now? Look at all of these turrets, man. This is this is a Terran that is not interested in uh, any Arbiters being in their main. We have... One, two, three, four, five, six. It, it's seven, too many. Eight, it is nine, too many. Ten, Don't even try to count them, man. It's ten too many. turrets, eleven plus. We have. Oh, I thought that science vessel was sitting on dedicated EMP or arbiter duty. I was like, that is. That well, is I mean, this this that's when you start doing the hallucination to get through. Like they'll just buy you a little bit of time. It's a one way trip, but you know it might get the job done. But look like we're finally gonna get another fight in the middle of the map. Royal Blue's out of position, so he's trying to retrieve, but nothing is sieged up. Good stasis to start it off. And two thousand like views trying to move forward. Lots of mines back at home though. If he can move these mines into some of these units, that'd be pretty good. But it seems like two thousand like doesn't want to really push this too much further now that Royal Blue has retreated to the high ground and got the siege back up. Yeah, but Royal Blue did lose a pretty good chunk of supply there. Uh, I'm not sure what it mostly was. It's a little hard to tell, but it was mostly Vultures. Presumably Terran doesn't care. Um, I do still see at least a control group of tanks, so... Plus the ones that are currently in Ice Cube form. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, both sides lost a decent amount, but I mean, they're nearing max with decent bags here. Royal Blue, really, the only thing they're worried about is that they're still low on gas, that third base being the mineral. And the Arbiter's gonna go for it. It doesn't care. Can it get in far enough? Too many turrets. That's a wasted Arbiter. I admire trying, but Royal Blue has lost enough games to Arbiters. He has no adequate defense to make sure that <laughs> recall does not happen. Not about recalls, man. Uh, but this is when you go for the sneaky recall up through the uh, the natural, right? That's how you do this? No, this is where you just fight with the uh, stasis instead. I mean, it's a big investment. Oh, great ooh, EMP. Fight with EMP. Yeah. Beautiful EMP. I mean, second Gonna one's there. Stasis. That stasis is fantastic. That hits well, so many look things. At and, all the, and it hits look at the, all the blue goo, though. Yeah. Unfortunately, just too much muscle here. Royal, Royal Blue just loves these siege tanks. Such a robust unit. And since so it's too sexy for you, it keeps trying to fight straight on instead of like doing counterattacks or getting a good flank off. It's really working out quite well for Royal Blue as he's just slowly pushed this forward. And this is what I was talking about on this map that this push from Terran is so intimidating because if you can get to a decent position, everything feels really good here. Reinforcements though for Sexy, he's going to try to move forward again, but without any more Zealots here, he's going to back off and wait for more. If he loses another Arbiter here, that'd be big, and he does lose it to the Goliaths, unfortunately. Yeah, and Terran taking that 12 o'clock as well. One of the nice things, you can like cover an expansion with your push as Terran. Yeah, he's got that 3 o'clock online, which two seconds for you. He's been on the same bases for a while, hasn't taken any more behind this, so... Royal Blue's situation looking pretty good here. He's now taking a and little really bit of supply. really only now saturating that fourth, too. Or that fifth down at the uh, the bottom left. That only has like five probes at it. <laughs> well, that's enough to start mining gas, at least. But that's not what he's going for here. Making some gateway units. The D-Matrix goes down, but there's too many units. That's not going to be quite enough. I think I think EMP is better in that spot. Just to get rid of the shields, kill the army faster. Even like in these little spots. But 
Royal Blue is just parked in a fantastic position and can keep reinforcing all they want. As both players sit about the same supply and oh, if you can move forward and siege that Stargate, that'd be fantastic for Royal Blue. There's so many tanks at home too. If Royal Blue can ever sort of like merge those up, there's no way this Terran ball is going anywhere. I mean, it's a gift though. Here come the Zealots. Zealots are good. Tanks are better. <laughs> Yeah, that's the uh, that's the summary of my experience in this matchup. <laughs> so those are good. Tanks are better. <laughs> and like he said, looks like he is going to be moving in to siege up that Stargate and sort of the neck of the uh, expansion, which will make it hard to get reinforcements back out. Looks like the first gates are just going up down at that bot left, so doesn't yet have the option to like, you know, make the sneaky side army to you know come counterattack with. Yeah, but you can already see the positions. Like, he's going to lose the Stargate. That Arbor's about to finish. Is it going to die before it can pop out? It does. So, no Arbor's on the way here. And with this army outside of the natural, you're going to cut off reinforcements, and he can start putting pressure on that mineral base. You can see there's not even pros mine there. He knows he's never going to get away with it. Yeah. And you can just put up so many mines here. I mean, there's lots of Zealots, but... Vultures are good against Zealots. <laughs> Well, even just vultures at this point, just to body block and buy yourself time. And look, he's even making missile turrets right in front, make sure it's not going to be arbors, get the little bit of detection, and just buildings in the way to make it annoying to kind of work with. I see a couple Stargates on the way. Is that going to be down that bottom base? They are. So maybe attempt to get that up, but Royal Blue's army is still in a great spot. Reinforcements coming through as well. And the final attack for uh, two seconds. If this one doesn't work, I don't know how he stays in the game much longer. Zealots moving forward, but there's so many tanks that are spread out so well without stasis. Is this going to be enough to go through? Enough vultures are still alive as well. The Zealots do a lot of damage, but not nearly enough, unfortunately. Royal Blue with a massive Watch supply lead that kills too. everything. And, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I don't know what else Protoss has their sleeve. They have 400 minerals to work with. Uh, well, the a lot of their probes are trapped in here too. Yeah, the you unit. Nice canal for you. <laughs> yeah, nice canal. Oh, yeah, please. Can I have that? Can I have that? <laughs> you may not. <laughs> ah, come on. It'd be fun. I get my control for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, though, I think Royal Blue's position here is just so so good. And losing that Stargate at the front of the base, so you can see he added on a couple more, trying to do something. See a couple zealots moving out. If they can get some counterattack damage, maybe, but I don't think it's going to be enough to stop Royal Blue from just choking as this Protoss completely out of production. There's no way to really build up any kind of army to fight this anymore. Yeah, I think uh, witnessing Protoss in their death throes at the moment. Terran, uh, I hear, can sometimes have a bad time trying to get up this ramp, but I mean, you almost don't need to. Oh, you uh, never need to. You this never need to go find out. And uh, Protoss is a little bit stuck. Like maybe just like you could put the put the final nail in the coffin by sending some vultures down to bot left, but it's almost superfluous at this point. Yeah, he's got the one vulture down there, but it's up by the mineral base, so maybe he doesn't really know about this base. Nope. Otherwise, I think he would do something. But so vulture, smoke break, man. <laughs> vultures got in. They're giving vision for the tanks. They can start mining up as much as they want as well. Two seconds for you. Gonna start losing more production behind this, and you can see they're just on fumes as far as money goes. The supply leads nearly doubling what his opponent has here. So Royal Blue's yeah, position looks pretty base. good. Yeah, <laughs> one mining base left for Rotas. Bad place to be against. Well, uh, hey, it's two. The Four. main's still mining. The main's still. Oh yeah, mining. I forgot the main's still mining. <laughs> I didn't even count it. Uh, looks like Terran Terran's confident enough that uh, they will go up this this ramp here. We'll go take out the uh, you know the Templar den and the Arbiter den and the Observer den. <laughs> Stop taking all these good, dens, man. Good den. These are this is a high tech race. They don't have dens for everything. <laughs> everything has dens, man. You gotta yeah the the Arbiter bungalow gotta, and the Zealot slums. Yeah, and... <laughs> the Arbiter bungalow. <laughs> yeah, and with all the tech going down. Uh, I don't really, I don't really see a way back into it for too sexy for you in this game. Now, I mean, remember, it is best of three. We gotta have that game three coming up, so you know, maybe just take that minute to chill out, kind of be like, all oh, right, all oh, right. <laughs> yeah, gotta gotta exhale, you know, just like that didn't work. <laughs> maybe gates in the middle next time. It's eclipse. It's a good map for that here. 
in the middle? Where where do you build them in the middle of an eclipse? Well, like like <laughs> in the under in the little underside there, like uh like in the in the long along the along the bottom and right sides that sort of pathway that goes near those two corner bases. Great place to put gateways. Well, I'll tell you from my own personal experience, because I love doing a little proxy gate action on uh, this, or some zealot first to send it in. A lot of Terran's wall on this map. <laughs> so, sometimes that's not quite the movie we want to go for, but we'll see what we're getting as we get into this game three. Another deciding game. This one's played in order. We're going to end on Eclipse to start on it. And I'm excited to see how this one's going to go in the top right. In the pink Protoss, it's too sexy for you. And in the bottom left, in the blue Terran, is IRK Royal Blue. Yeah, I think this uh, well. this map probably favors Royal Blue the way it's playing. Like, if he can comfortably get some extra bases and Pros can't get completely out of control, like, he's got multiple avenues to go through here. You can, I think it's pretty easy to defend the bases if you can take them as Terran, so... I'm I'm a little concerned about how that second game went for as far as the Pros' chances of winning the third one. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the nice things for Terran on Eclipse is supposed to be that if you do manage to, you know, bring a big push to bear, there is nowhere else for Protoss to get gateways and stuff set up. So if you do manage to push in, like like last game, I mean, if Protoss had maybe had like one extra base going and they could rebuild some of their tech at bot left, there'd like still be a lot of game left to play for Terran to close it out. But uh, on Eclipse, like once you've bottled the main, that's kind of it. Ooh, I like the what we're seeing though from Pros. This is a relatively early scout. They can look for something, or maybe the opportunity to get a gas deal force Royal Blue down a certain path. And you can see he's coming up pretty fast here. But Royal Blue's been pretty good about getting gas nice and early. We'll see if he manages to get a gas deal off. That'd be so sick. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, no, there's think... no. Yeah, he's going for it. Come on. No. Oh, but no! Oh! <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> probe, probe can indeed be annoying, but uh, not going to be able to steal the gas, and that's a little rough for Protoss. I mean, you did kind of like you you do eat an, a little bit of an economic hit for taking a scout out that early, right? Like that's one of your first like eight probes or something. Well, no, he scouted after a pylon. It's just earlier than you need to in this matchup. Usually, usually you could scout after like the gateway. You can make a zealot. Like you wait for the first dragoon, even if you want to. So, but I still go forward. You confirm it's not like CC first. You have the opportunity, and which Royal Blue did manage to stop it. But you know what? I think uh, overall you didn't lose too much, and you get some nice information. Now, your opponent is not doing a gas to expand. It's not CC first. It's kind of the normal game plan, which is always a comfort to know that you're playing something you're expecting. Indeed. And Royal Blue is going to finish up this, like great wall of Terran setup that would make it so that even if a zealot does come in uh, plenty of micro ability for these marines against the hypothetical zealot which it seems like is not likely to exist just yet uh, it's like too sexy for you gonna forego the zealot this time around but he, he's foregone the zealot every time around he's not one of those zealot really? first kind of jerks <laughs> I think, I think that'd be a certain uh, level of degenerate kind of character to always go for that early zealot and two seconds for you. He's much more honorable than that. He's been always getting that first goon. Here's the range behind it. Expect the Nexus, Robo, three gates. Like, I think we're going to see the same build again because it won game one. Game two, maybe you just didn't take your expansion fast enough. You took a bad fight. If for us, two seconds for you, feeling confident with the build they've been using before, no reason to switch it up. Yeah, uh, Royal Blue, it looks like this time, not going to go for the, like, expansion before factory type play. Not sure if either they felt like it didn't feel very safe last time around, or if maybe that's just something they prefer on a four-player map, and on a two-player map, they don't want to go for it. Uh, but either way, going to have the factory done and machine shop up. Ooh, wait, is that two on gas? No, that's the full three on gas. He did oh, pull them. Off, he did pull them off initially. Start making the machine shop, and then switched up the plan. He's got that SCV scout. Sees the nexus timing. Nothing unusual here. And Royal Blue did move down. He used the Marines to kill that scouting probe and had the the SCV down on the bottom. I don't know if he's trying to do some kind of little fake out or whatever kind of decision they're going for here. But he's Even getting a fifth Marine. 
Yeah, he's going. He, he's he's doing an FD. That's what we're seeing here. That's why he's getting right. mines behind this. He's going to move out with that first tank, probably, and just get some nice map control. You reinforce with vultures, get some mines down before observers are on the field, and then it's much harder for Pros to do any kind of shenanigans and kind of push forward. And if your opponent's skipping the fence, as we've seen two seconds before you do, if they're not forward with the goons, like they're being back and defensive, and they don't slow it down, it can actually be a little bit scary to deal with this pressure. Yeah, and so it looks like uh, at this point, uh, Royal Blue has shown that they have a pretty good command of some various different openers. It looks like too sexy for you throwing down a second gateway uh, re reasonably early. Ooh, this goon's gonna get trapped though. Oh, it means good damage against goons. Yeah, the fact you got trapped and killed is not what you want to deal with right now. Doing a good job picking off some of these rains. Two already go down, but taking damage on these goons. You see one nearing death. One's about to run out of shields as well. This, there's no stopping here. Like, there's no microwave to slow this down. Roybo's literally just marching across the map as fast as they want. They got an expansion behind this, but this is going to be hard for two seconds for you to not take damage on. It has to be very careful moving forward. going to be three goons with two on the way versus all these marines in one tank. Isn't targeting the damaged goon, which is a little rough, but has to pull the probes. Got to be really careful with all these probes around here in the mines. Uh, but it looks like not going to take drastic damage here, probably. It is going to continue to be annoying, though. Well, these goods are pretty low, and one tank at full health. You could just fight this. He's going to try to do some damage. Here comes that first Ooh, tank. Drag. Oh, man, the tank takes damage from that. It's actually pretty sick. This is the best you're going to get in this situation. One good's going to move forward in Royal Blue. He's got this vulture. It's going to be able to lay some mines. That's always annoying to deal with I'll here. Oh, he Oh, he got that goon. goon. Let's go. And he can start harassing Royal Blues. This attack did far more than it should have, but unfortunately, two seconds for you. Takes too much damage early on. Gonna get a couple free kills here. And you can see Royal Blue being up on supply, up on workers, and their base is up and running now. Be okay, careful with these mines. Oh, no. Oh, goodness. Ooh. Oh, man. Yo, that that goon was, I see. Skin of its teeth. Yeah, I saw that one. It managed to get that mine killed off here. But still, look at all the damage that's happening from these just random <laughs> vultures that just snuck in here. Just the most obnoxious thing. There's even still one mine left, and more pressure from Royal Blue here. Oh, that mine goes off, kills the goon. More attack, more mines getting laid down. This is like the most obnoxious one unit at a time pressure I've ever seen. <laughs> Royal Blue, it seems like, did have a little bit of a hard time making uh, SCVs out of both CCs. Only a three SCV advantage, despite the amount killed, but still uh, just great harass with these vultures. And like, these, the, the goon count is what, two? There's two Dragoons out right now? So Terran is just like feeling totally safe. Got three factories up already. Uh, making, making more vultures, why not? Well, now there's an observer on the field. We're on two gateway production. Observers are they have access to them. And you can see now the pros being pulled back to the main. They can't recover and do what we're doing here. Still trying to harass, but I think the dragoon counts finally built up enough. You got the detection. I think you got to give up the aggression here and start building up back at home. Which Royal Blue, he's only on one machine shop, but still has three factories made and. It hasn't started towards an armory or anything, but still in a great spot here. Still has supply lead <coughs> and a worker lead. A lot of gas available as well, so uh, presumably can throw down the tech when they so desire. Siege mode only just now starting, um, but it's going to be pretty hard for Protoss to think about moving out right now with the threat of all these vultures on the map. It's a long way to Terran's base when you consider all the mines in between, and uh, vultures move quick. Speedy boys. I mean, we'll see here. I would really want to see when either player is going to try to take that third base. You see Royal Blue. And now with a couple tanks going to move out here, but the Observer is going to be in the base, see the move out. And thank you to Kakers for saying bless you in the chat. I appreciate it. <laughs> Unlike Aaron someone writing a call with here. me. <laughs> I thought it was best just not to mention it, man. Uh, looks like Too Sexy For You is going to decide to come out here and clean up some of these mines, but... uh. Are there going to be enough goons at home to stop? There's four vultures looking to go for a run by. Oh, they're, they're just going to go right by this pylon. Yeah. And right into the waiting arms of two more goons that just pops. For two at a time. Uh, I'm actually surprised he's going for the big and fight. And blown up by their own. Uh... 
Hey, it's, a, it's a little more pressure, a little more annoyance. Does kill a, a Dragoon with that mine, and this uh, Vulture's actually get like, there's no reaction here from Too Sexy. Things getting a little flustered with everything going on here. Finally, these things getting pulled off, but that Vulture's up to six kills. That did so much damage for the minimal investment and cost. Royal Blue is yeah, going to very hectic. Out. Yeah. I like that what we're seeing, though. This little, just um, the most annoying play. It's like, no, I'm going to harass my way into a victory. And right now, it's working out great. Look at that worker supply lead, the overall supply lead. And he's got mines at the 12. They're not blocking the next, but he knows it's there. And that their mine in the mineral line, that might be massive later. <laughs> <laughs> Probe goes down instantly. We got tanks starting to seize his high ground, plus missile turrets as well, so these observers can't come in and spot what's going on. And it looks like Royal Blue's just rallied this uh this high ground here. It doesn't feel like letting too sexy for you get out onto the map. Uh throwing up two more factories back home as well, so and an armory. Uh I I don't know. It's gonna take a lot for Too Sexy to get out on here. We have no real tech coming in, just uh the shuttles coming out now. No citadel, no uh no robotic support bay. So just gonna be goons and zealots and maybe a shuttle to try to get this this contain busted. And that's a lot of mines when you consider there's a missile turret there as well. Yeah, I mean we'll see what the move actually ends up being though. Royal Blue went up to a decent factory count for these two bases. He's got the plus one on the way, so we'll see uh, if he ends up going for like some kind of push on these two. Or he has SUVs already in position to take their next base as well. Over at the 9, the bottom right, and the top left. So he's got dealer's choice of what expansion he feels like having. Here comes that shuttle with some uh, stuff to drop, but he's going to try to break through. Great mine drag, clears a lot of the mines, gets that first tank that uh, Dragoon get dropped to his death. The shuttle dies for a good cause. So he's actually going to keep moving forward, but it's just Dragoons here. Is high ground bench going to be enough? Without the mines here, it's very close. And it doesn't look like he wants to lose too many units for free here. He's going to back up here and try to rebuild, but he almost broke out. It was super close, which means Royal Blue is feeling great that he barely held onto the container. Yeah, I hear, I hear a Zealot going to town somewhere. What's, what's it's a, in the natural is fighting a uh, Vulture. Ah, I see, I see. And yeah, now with five factories online, making two tanks at a time, got the scanners going down. Uh... You know, uh, with with this degree of reinforcements coming in from Royal Blue, plus a pretty huge worker lead, and no third being able to be established for uh, Protoss, looks like this is this is Terran's Terran's game to lose. I feel like started to tear down the pylons up front. It's actually going to supply block Protoss temporarily. Oh, that's uh, really obnoxious to go through that here. And look at that one tank placement, like way out of the way, oh, nowhere yeah. near the mines, nowhere near the other units. That alone is just allowing this to kind of break down the wall. A couple of SVs are going to go to keep reinforcing with more turrets, just more reinforcement here. And that Nexus as the 12th, it didn't get killed, but it can't do anything here. Yep, plus the getting some like annoying supply depots going down so that Protoss can't push back out. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you do as Protoss here. Maybe try to like hack the Arbiters. We are so behind in tech. Citadel of a Dune just now finishing Zealot leg speed. Maybe that's the timing you're looking for. Get a big round of Zealots and go. Well, what big round? There's only five gateways, man. There's, yeah. no, there's no big round of anything going out of this Protoss base, unfortunately. You gotta keep do trying to move forward. You have bombs. Doing a pretty nice job, but this tank line is deep, and getting through these supply depots is going to be murderous for these dragoons. Yeah, uh, there, there is a lot of there, down. there's a lot of mines by the tanks. That could be the only kind of way I would think you would get forward here. But it was just going to keep moving forward here, losing vultures to kill dragoons, but the tank line stays alive as he keeps inching forward. A couple of goons by themselves going to go through. The mines going to help him. Unfortunately, not quite enough. All the units for Pros end up getting killed. Reinforcements with these speed zealots, are they going to be enough to break through? It's really just scrapping on both sides. Royal Blue finally taking the third base of their own on the side behind all this pressure. That one invulnerable tank did finally go down, but uh, I'm not sure. Royal Blue having a little bit of a hard time keeping up production behind this, it seems like. There's a lot to manage. Uh, but I still think they're in a great spot. 30 supply ahead, 10 of which is workers. Would like to see a little bit more vultures to buffer for these zealots, but oh, and dropping the barracks here. Just, uh, 
Just brutal, really. Dropping the barracks, get a missile turret out, like... How is, how is Protoss ever gonna get out of this? I don't know, it's gonna be very difficult. You see the Zelda doesn't even know what to do here. He doesn't even know what he's trying to attack. His <laughs> tanks are gonna be enough to help out here. And honestly, I think Royal Blue's just being a good friend. Remember? Like, two seconds for you to wall himself in early. He's like, hold on, I'll help you, buddy. I'll build that wall for you. <laughs> he's just trying to help out a friend in need. <laughs> yeah. Uh, looks like Protoss maybe think about establishing this third here. Did manage to make some probes out of that Nexus that didn't go down, but... Uh, I mean, there's mind giving it, vision. He sees through. that there's pylons on the way. Like, you're never going to be able to do anything with this 12 o'clock base. It's so undefendable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the, the Ooh. Vulture can actually just get through, too. Well, like Zealous did manage to walk right through the wall, doing it the best they possibly can. Get a couple tank kills. All those mines go down, but he doesn't get the good drag. The second one's much better. So, resetting some of these uh, tanks, but loses every Zealot to do it. Massive supply difference. And two seconds for you. Gonna tap out of another game. Apparently, if Royal Blue can get rolling, that's all they need to do. <laughs> Indeed. Ah, uh, man. I, I've, like, he's been around CPL for so long, and I've played him enough times. Just like every time I'm like, if he's, if the game's like, past 10 minutes and he's comfortable it's a problem it's done it's gonna be a problem as we've seen in those camps for sure well while we're at the midpoint of our cast remember we are casting tier zero today between fear factory and destructoid some week three games that's what that's what we're doing this week we got another cast tomorrow we got another one on thursday in the afternoon that's all on the cpl main channel then cool work gates is doing something thursday night i think it's actually casting some old week one tier zero games at, at someone's request so that's gonna be a little flash in the past but still cpl 7 still great games as well and I think we got someone else signed up to cast something, but with date to be determined. Stay in the Discord on that uh, official streams channel. Don't mute it, because that's where you learn where we're doing all of our stuff. And other than that, like, what about you, Becker? Are you casting anything else this week? Me? Uh, no, I'm not planning on doing any more casts this week. Uh, we're we're going to just ring him out for all he's worth tonight, then, if he's only going to help out one night. But we still appreciate you hopping on the cast with us. I like getting in some other people some other fresh faces in here while we are waiting for the blinds return which is next week guys it's gonna be fun uh we did not update the uh bot look at the screen it's in the screen you can see it in the middle down on the unit tab speaking of unit tab i don't know how, that's not a segue in the top left in the all of protoss it's europe <laughs> and in the bottom right in the magenta zerg it is aegis Uh, they, had a, they had a rough split there. Probes, probe walking all the way around to the back of the mineral line to mine those first minerals. Uh, no, that just... Not that it, like, I don't think it makes any kind of real big difference, but it just puts you in such a bad mess. Oh, yeah. Okay, can, we just redo, can we just redo this one one time? Just, like, remake one time? <laughs> lag <-ry. laughs> Oh, if someone said lag I would, would I be a nice guy to say yeah? Or be like, no, free win. <laughs> Let's go. Just, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't honor like a remake TR sixteen. Oh yeah yeah I would yeah I would. <laughs> I used to actually try to always do the uh, flat turn range of the dynamic because I know that some sometimes can get a little fishy. But it's like trying to detect, especially if someone's like on Wi-Fi. I don't really do that anymore though. It seemed to be less consistent than it used to be. I, uh, I I like I like dynamic. Not everyone does. Some people find it very annoying. But uh, I feel like unless it's someone that I've played before, if it's someone I've never played before, I usually just want to do dynamic because it'll figure it it'll figure itself out. But someone I play a lot, I'll eventually figure out what TR to play on. So it looks like we're gonna get that's overpool for uh, Aegis, and Erob's gonna be opening up with uh, a forward gateway, which one would presume would lead to a gate fast expansion. But we'll have to see. Yeah, I mean, it should be some kind of easy opportunity to get a little pressure down, but yeah, if you can set up the expansion, I, I just, I need to know what these, like, tier 0, tier 1 guys, like, every time I watch them play, it's almost always gateway expands, and it's like us lowly tier 2, tier 3 players, and we're like, but I need my forge, I'm scared. <laughs> We were trying to duck out with the drone a little bit just to see if we get sneaky, but Eerov catches it. It's going to just block the hatchery, be annoying. Look at that money skyrocket for Zerg here, up to 420, doing such a good job. Makes some links behind us to put some pressure on behind it. Still hasn't started this hatchery. This is so good. Oh, and he's even going to be a jerk about it. Let's go. <laughs> I always find that very annoying, but uh, 
I don't think we'll it's worth it. Where, uh, I don't think it's uh, worth it. If you cancel it, okay. their third. Well, I think on this map in particular, it's very annoying in that there's not a lot of good places for just like a quick and easy third, especially when Protoss is opening gate. Um, but it looks like with the six lings, uh, Protoss is going to decide that discretion is the better part of Valor and keep the Zell at home. I, I do not like that this pile and finish. He already has the lings. Like you. Cause that's like, isn't that the assumption? If you block the hatchery long enough and they didn't send the second drone, they don't immediately go for the third base. It's like, well, they have all this money banked up and plenty of larva. What are they spending on? It's links. They're gonna be able to kill this pylon, and that delays your nexus, that delays your forge, delays your tank, it delays everything. Like, well, if you wanted I to cancel it, it, I think it's cool, but if like, you were going forge, then the right the right play for Zerg, I believe, is to make only two links and two drones. So, then you might not have as much of a chance of that pylon just like getting instantly killed but yeah i think letting the pylon finish is pretty hard to justify given that the probe the, the drone already just left one ling gonna find its way in this wall is a little awkward but uh gonna mostly get the job done ling's gonna be able to come in and see what's going on though although not a lot to see at this point haven't even taken our first gas there we go so i guess we know that it's not going to be you know uh eight gate eight gate zealot only off of two base no no gas mind what world I've, do you live in that. where that's like that's happened to you? <laughs> I lost that. Yep. Were you playing against the computer? That sounds like a computer build. No, but I've also <laughs> lost to the computer. The computer I've, I've... does like three gate zealot off one base. <laughs> it's truly brutal. Uh, Twelve year old pack rat had a really hard time trying to beat that. Had to use the cheat codes. Uh, <laughs> looks like gonna maybe see a layer Ooh, no a hydralis den so with the hydra den already done uh i'm thinking this is going to be three hat hydra out of our uh, intrepid zerg here and no scout uh available for the protoss at least i don't think protoss saw that so no he tried to get a probe in but laser blocking the ramp he's setting a second probe behind it he's gonna try to sneak his way and get some idea of what's going on here but I think when Aegis moved forward and saw that, I don't know if it's the wall you're supposed to do or if it's just a little bit awkward, but I think when you see that wall, it's like, you know what, I can get such a good concave hitting these buildings. I think you, yeah. you start thinking about it a little bit more. And he still has his scouting ling alive. He knows what's going on here. If you can keep it alive long enough to confirm like a Stargate, oh, you're feeling so good, Zerg. Well, that and um, it's very convenient anytime you put Protoss a little bit behind, like by killing that pylon. Uh, Three hatch hydra is a very natural follow up because it's a good way to punish them for their stuff being delayed in any way. And we do see hydras on the way, hydra speed on the way. Uh, how many drones we got? We got three drones at the third, we got six drones at the nat, and we got uh, nine drones in the main. So nine, nine, six, three. That's it's one low, off, man. It's low, almost there. <laughs> No, that's like that's like low on the scale of how all in are you. Can still afford to make some uh, some hatcheries, but a little bit more all in than if you made the nine seven three. Got to get that extra drone there. But uh, looks like it's gonna be all hydras from here on out. Seven hydras in the production. Uh, Stargate's not even done yet, and I think that these hydras are gonna show up before a corsair even has a chance to get out and go be annoying. And yeah. that's pretty rough. Protoss smells something, though. Got more cannons going down. Uh, range is only just starting, but it looks like with this position that Zerg can at least knock down this gateway without having to have Hydra range done. Uh, Which is truly and... obnoxious. <laughs> that's the only gateway for Protoss, too. Corsairs do not shoot down, and scouts are too expensive. So uh, if this gateway goes down, Protoss is not going to have any options to make attacking units. And yeah. Zerg does have these overlords here as well, so even if this Templar Archives finishes, uh, a DT should not be able to stop the whole rush. Well, uh, it, here's the first Corsair. He needs to get that scouting if we get an idea of what's going on. It's still very committed from Aegis, but honestly... What's going like, on is SHSHSH. -S -S -H -S -H. <laughs> All the Hydras. <laughs> yeah, another hatchery on the way, too, instead of like trying to tech up or get anything. That range is about to finish, so I think at this point you can start whittling through. And that attack upgrade is still pretty far away, so if you can kill that off, even that, it's going to be pretty good. Storm's on the way, but here comes that big move forward. He's going for the gateway or can. Seems a little bit uh, indecisive what he's trying to go for. Zealots can't get the big attack to go through here. A couple cans 
taking some damage, two go down, the gateway's down, 200 health, still trying to figure out what he wants to attack here, the gateway's so close to going down, finally does go down, the last can dies along with it, not going for the fort, but GG's good enough, Zerg takes game one. Yeah, and just a, just a really good way of showing how Zerg can pounce on Protoss for being late there, with the Stargate not quite in time to see what's going on. Uh, just, uh, just no options. I mean, I, I pointed out the moment, I was like, that pilot finish, it delays everything. Oh, yeah. Not a problem. That's, <laughs> that's a problem. That's the, that's the kind of thing that Zerg can see and just be like, all right, that's it. You're going to be 30 seconds late. I can, I can win from that. Well, very clean and decisive win in game one. We'll see what we get in game two. Every series we've had so far has gotten us to a game three, so we'll see if there's that the nice comeback so we can get that full series action. But we're here on Polypoid, and in the bottom right, in the Magenta Zerg, it's Aegis. Did they? Okay, they did. It's blue. It's blue. We're just top bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and in the bottom left, in the red Protoss, is Erob, who gets a better split this time around. Golf claps. Hey, splitting's hard. My splits it are. It is. My, my splits are bad. <laughs> that golf clap was sincere. <laughs> no such thing as a sincere golf clap. <laughs> What's? You don't watch enough golf. <laughs> I don't think anyone watches enough golf. Although oh, I will act. My no, boss also... watches so much golf. You come into the office sometimes and just golf on the TV. It's like, why? Why have you done this? No, I'll okay. I'll actually say that though. When I was a lot younger, hold up. We see. Uh, I'm gonna fo just casually follow this probe. But um, <laughs> we got we got time. What we know what's happening here. Oh no, it's just... Oh, I thought it was like moving out early enough, like, oh, shenanigans. It, but no, not shenanigans. But, yeah, I've, the Masters for golf is actually, like, oddly interesting. Like, you'll turn it on, and then you'll just kind of casually watch it, and then you'll be like, oh, shit, where'd my afternoon go? <laughs> yeah, it is, a, it is a game that takes a very long time. Uh, That's not what I... Like... Come on. That's not what I... Mean. <laughs> you'll, you'll grow up one day. Uh, never. Uh, looks like, looks like Protoss is gonna be going for that gate as well, and, uh, Aegis is going for the overpool, so no, no deviation from what we saw last game just yet. Uh, both players, I guess, liked where they were at. This time, though, uh, well, I was gonna say the probe might not get there in time, but the probe's gonna go for this cheeky scout where you go scout where the overlord would be coming from, and then if it's not there, you, uh, you assume that it's the other place. Irob's gonna get a little bit lucky here in that Aegis was actually not scouting the like quote unquote proper direction with their overlord, yeah. but Irob will actually infer the correct information anyway by the lack of the overlord. Even though had Aegis been in the top left, Irob still would have gone to the bottom right. So uh, fun fun little metagame on where you send your first overlord, but this time around, looks like Aegis is not even going to play that game of getting blocked. Just going to throw <laughs> down the second hatchery at this third base. Like, get out of here. I don't. I don't want to play. Yeah, which I mean, honestly, you feel fine with that. Like, oh, yeah. this is a much I'm better third. Sure. That well, the the one that he, what he took on Polaris a little scarier. This one's completely fine. You can go crazy on that. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, looks like also snuck one extra drone. Not sure when that happened. Um. Yeah, it was just the four legs, enough to deter any kind of shenanigans or put a little bit of pressure on Force of Cannon, maybe. But, but as we see, it is the gateway opening. We know that. And that Nexus, there's a lot of money built up, but no Nexus on the way yet. You're up, um, I think, again, things against Probe slightly delayed, but nothing too bad. Probe goes down, gas gets taken. So we'll <laughs> see if he just decides, I mean, hey, like, worked pretty okay in game one. Uh, plus, this is a position where the the forge is like wider than it is tall. If you imagine the whole thing in two D space, so here uh, it's easier to poke down the forge from behind the cannons um, than it would be if your opponent was at say uh, the top right position. And you have this nice ridge you can park your hydras on. I'm just saying, you know, if uh, oh. if Aegis decides they'd like to run it back, it's a nice spot to do it in. I would actually disagree a little bit here because unlike what we saw in the last map, that vertical diagonal wall is really awkward. This is like the cleanest vert vertical rectangle grid of cans you'll ever make in your life. So if you want, if you as long as you know how many cans to make, you can set it up very cleanly to be easy to do. I have to see here. Uh, Aegis, Aegis gonna throw down that hydro den. Now, just because the hydro den gets put down doesn't necessarily mean that this has to be an all-in. Uh, 
Zerg can build like about like seven or so Hydras and then just transition into more hatcheries, but Probe not gonna be able to get in. Sees these lings on the ramp, and you gotta wonder if if Erob's like spidey senses are tingling at this point, you know? Uh, like you just had this happen to you in the game that you just finished playing. <laughs> it's gonna go, gonna go. Look, I don't know actually what this probe will be looking for, but uh, yeah, I gotta wonder what Erob's thinking. We got Hydra Speed coming along, so and let's 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 count some drones. We got six at what what would be the nat basically. We got. Do we have nine in the main? We have eight on minerals in the main. Uh, and three at the nap. Eight, six, three. That's enough to make all hydras if you don't want to make any more drones. But at least one more are going to be on the way. Ooh, this probe really trying to get in. Those links did not move from the ramp. Your spidey sense got to be tank lately. you got to know there's something happening here. But you'll see what the reaction is. The Stargate is about halfway done here. Hasn't added on more cans yet, but not under the pressure to do so. I like making that pylon down at the natural in a great spot to make sure you don't lose power to everything should they snipe the pylon instead. And we haven't seen the uh, citadel go down just yet. So we're seeing weapons, we're seeing everything else, but you know, saving up some money if you need to kind of make sure you can make your defenses in an adequate way. We're seeing Irob's going to be able to finish the Stargate, maybe scout before he decides to commit to anything. Goal 668. Uh, looks like going to get... Uh range pretty quickly. Stargate's already done though, so much much quicker Stargate this time around. We're going to have to see if uh, Zerg can keep those overlords alive, and we got some cheeky zealots. They're going to they're gonna poke out. They know where the Hydras are and where therefore the Hydras are not. They're going to see if they can run around probably to this third base. Go be extra annoying. Hydras are going to start shipping down on this gateway. And with the, um, the, the cannon the line, it's one... Zealots. Cans wanted one space back, so he's giving up the gateway to make sure it's a little harder to move in and kill off all the cans instead. So I think we're going to see a decent amount of cans being added on here. Those zealots not moving in for the kill just yet. Gateway goes down. Is there more production? There is not. Range is about to finish, too. So this forge should be able to be taken out without having to get in range of the uh, hydras. But here come the zealots now. There is. He just is going to reveal, reveal his trick. Uh, and two zealots can fight two hydralisks pretty pretty handily. We'll see if the drones will help them out, maybe. Meanwhile, Forge does go down, plus one doesn't finish. We got seven cannons warped in, not really a ton of room left for any more. Um, and no second Forge done. There is a Citadel finishing up, but no gateways. And still all Hydras on the way. No indication that uh, Aegis is thinking about macroing out of this or something of that sort. Yeah, and we see a Temple Arc on the way, but there's going to be one gateway that's not even finished yet. This is going to be so long before you have any reasonable amount of storms. It's, like, I know you got to make the cans, you got to survive here, but Aegis, you've already forced seven cans. If you clear, clear yeah. up those things back at home, like, is this where you, you try to transition, or did he cut uh, drones too early and he's got to actually make this attack work? Oh, I think there's no reason to transition here. Seven cannons, You, if you have nothing else with it, then you need, like, one cannon for every two hydras, I think, is what uh, Crane has said. And there's so many hydras, and there's nothing to back these cannons up. These gateways are just finishing now. We're going to have, like, what, one Templar on the way? Uh, I think if these hydras just go in, they're just going to clear up these cannons and end the game. Uh, we'll see. Everything's moving towards the front here. Templar on the way, as well as Storm being researched. Zealot legs near completion, but there's no zealots that really matter. Only a couple. These three zealots are going to appreciate that. <laughs> well, are they? They gotta survive long enough to get there. So unfortunately, they're gonna die for the cause. They will not appreciate anything. Probes get pulled. The hydras get a great concave. The first row of cans basically going down here. Probes dying as they attempt to defend, but it's a meager defense. It can't get anything done. Unfortunately, Aegis does so many hydras alive and reinforce behind it. But actually, the macro is slipping, not reinforcing. But it doesn't matter. All the defense goes down. I think Aegis is gonna break through and makes this a very quick 2-0. <laughs> Sometimes you just make three hatch hydra, man. <laughs> you say sometimes, I say all the time. Like, every freaking <laughs> Zerg, I feel like, plays this way. But, hey, it's well executed from our Zerg player there. A nice, convincing 2-0 win. And with that, we got one more series to go. I think there's not Zerg in this one. Did? Oh, uh, no, there is. I think there is. Maybe? I'm trying to remember. I, I, 
like some Yeah, there, there is one more Zerg game. Fine. <laughs> yes. But finally, Zerg versus Terran. Hey, we can see, like, not Crazy Kronos. is in this game, right? Crazy is in crazy this game. Jojo. Oh, boy. Which, funny story, once we get into this one. Hey, they're starting up Polaris Rhapsody. Good for them. <laughs> they did it. Yay. Three out of four got it right. <laughs> <laughs> Right. For so, the other one, we love you too. Um, well, maybe. <laughs> what are we on? Uh, come on, I gotta fix this up. There we go. All right, so in the top left, in the blue Zerg, it's JoJo. And in the bottom right, in the red parent, is Crazy. Nice. So, when I'm looking for replays for this set, which you guys. If you didn't know, when you play in CPL, you upload your replays into a folder. If everyone does their jobs, I have to download one team's folder and I have everything. Usually not the case, unfortunately. So, I, I'm navigating through. I'm like, alright, let me get the replays. And I take a look at Crazy vs. JoJo. I grab the replays from one set. And I look at the replays and it's three different people. Game 1, Game 2, Game 3. It's this person first, not the same person three times. It's like just three random ass replays. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> so luckily the other team knew what they were doing, has has the real replays for me, but I, I gotta I gotta DM someone that you're you're pulling shenanigans and I don't appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Please do not just go submitting three random replays. <laughs> uh especially yeah, well... especially since people do like different IDs. So it's like is this is this his ID? Is this the real ID or not? And it's like, well, no. One was Pros, one was Zerg, one was Terran. Like this can't be right. You're not allowed to switch races. <laughs> you ever you ever like prepped an ID for a uh, for a CPL match? Um, yes, I have. Well, I have my classic ID. The Carbot is cute, which it is. Yeah. If you guys did not know. And other than that, I usually name my, I uh, have like a fun name based on what uh, gateway I'm playing on. So I have like, say, Zero's EU vacation when I'm playing on Europe. <laughs> Is that hatchery center? Sorry. I just thought always. Every, every time it looks I, weird. Every time, I, right? every time I think that, I get proven wrong. So it's like, even though like I agree, and like now you're saying it, but I think it's confirmation bias. I'm not sure. So it looks like a. Uh... Crazy, crazy, not going to take gas right away either. So it looks like we're going to see Bio probably most likely out of Terran. And then we got a spawning pool on 11 and more drones on the way for Zerg. So probably not going to be that like super fast two hatch unit. Likely to be some, maybe some three hatch. Although, yeah, okay. So we got. I've been, I've been reading some, I've been reading some on Jayun's Discord about how. Professional Zerg players now are going for this like 12, 12, 12, um, which is like a little bit in between a two hatch and a three hatch. Uh, okay. I don't really know a whole ton about how it works because executing it is far beyond my own ability. But if I had to guess, that's what I would say is likely to go on here is that Jojo is going to get a layer before making a third hatchery, but maybe only just a little bit before or just a little bit after. Yeah. Is this, is this the like um, earlier? Yeah. I was gonna say, is this like what sometimes I know like casually, especially me and the blind, I think we casually call it two point five hatch. <laughs> yeah, I think some people call it that as well. I don't know if it's supposed to be called that or not. But yeah, so like getting the early gas mining just enough for the layer. It's a little bit a little bit interesting. I don't know exactly how this works, but I'm interested to see how it plays out. because uh, the layer is like not as fast as it would be if you did a two hatch build, but obviously you have this third hatch, so it's still faster than a three hatch layer. Uh, and meanwhile, crazy it looks like uh, is going to throw down an eBay before another barracks, so not going to be going for the like two racks academy like early push probably, um, but instead going to be gearing up to get the early upgrades and maybe see like a plus one five racks type deal. Uh, that, that's what I'm thinking, crazy. I mean, any, anyone that knows the CPL legend of Crazy, he's only been in the league for, I think, two, three seasons at this point. And he like he was Grandmaster of StarCraft 2. So the mechanics were there, but the knowledge was lacking early on. 
And I think a lot of his builds tend to lean to the fact like he's a macro hype beast. So him going for like five racks plus one would really lean to his skill set a lot more rather than doing like two racks academy. It does get him in trouble sometimes. If you do something really aggressive, you can sometimes catch him off with the time is throw throw him off his game and things kind of fall apart. But with both players kind of getting comfortable into like a let, let, let's chill out for a couple minutes and build up our normal stuff, I think Crazy is going to be very happy to see us, especially since his SUV is still scattered around, still sees everything, and confirms the spire just being started. Yeah. Well, so I think against a against a two hatch play. Heron doesn't really have the option, like you have to go two racks or you're almost certainly just gonna get killed by the mutas. But against the against not two hatch, Terran has the decision. They can they can decide whether they want to go for two racks or uh like upgrades before adding more racks. And it looks like gonna be adding on those extra barracks now. It'll be interesting to see how many uh it should Terran be five. decides to add on. It should be five. I think he's pretty comfortable doing the plus five, uh, the five racks plus one, and goes into double starport SK. Yeah, uh, I mean you can do like four as well, though I think, and get like an earlier factory. There's some options, but uh, yeah. And then Zerg, meanwhile, like the benefit of this, you get really comfy with like all these drones. Uh, you have this third hatchery, so you can make a lot of stuff. <laughs> The spire is gonna pop soon. Looks like this overlord might be a little teeny bit late, but uh, overall, yeah, nice timing. And there are those two extra barracks going down, so looks like we're gonna be seeing some very relatively like old standard Terran stuff, and against uh, some new hotness for the Zerg. Yeah, the the Nine old the, yeah, the old and new instant hydro, <laughs> instant hydro den. So yeah. not gonna be staying on mutas for long. Just gonna get just enough to go. Uh, be really annoying. I feel like that is a very classic kind of look because if you look at what we've seen, you know, in recent CPL, I feel like there's been a lot of vogue like let's get lots of mutas and plus one and like really lean into the muta pressure. And seeing someone like literally just go enough mutas to make you defend it, then straight to lurkers, I'll get hive eventually. Like this is very much a more like slow and controlled style. But here comes those first groups of mutas across here. What's the defense yeah. look like? There's only one turret at the natural. This is already scary. Yeah, and if they engage these marines on the bridge, marine range is not done yet. Stim is, as we can hear there, but uh, no range means these mutas do have a window to really do some damage. And the other nice thing about this uh, 2.5 hatch build is that like you don't have to try to take your third right away. Uh, as we see here, you can just throw down uh, some sunks and be safely sort of like macro up on two bases gonna be chasing down this scout uh, yeah this actually I think does a great little misdirection it's so committed to deny the scout and you can see Jojo immediately starts scay he's like what are you hiding from me well nothing really <laughs> and you can see that army move out to the top right it just stops like there's nothing there where am I going <laughs> yep and more uh, more sunken's going down so it looks like uh, Jojo is planning on staying comfy on just these two base for a little while taking a third of the mineral only um, a little bit interesting but Polaris is kind of starved for expansions so I expect that's more of a this is what there is than a this is what I really want well I think uh, I think what we like what you would end up doing is like you get enough lurkers and everything just enough to secure the top right then you get the double gas once you get the hive tech probably just gotta be very careful and you see jojo without adding on the more muters or anything now he is being reasonably careful crazy freely moving across the map here and nice little round of reinforcements if these mutas can kind of whittle that down that's gonna be pretty good here and you see four sunk at the front engagement, it's gonna be though. pretty hard not getting the volleys off they need losing two mutalisks and taking heavy damage on one to only kill i think three marines and if these marine balls sink up they have plus one four sunkens is not going to be enough well, these lurkers might be Terrans looks like they're trying to go for the bust. Mutas are not in position. But I think the Sunks might be just enough. It's close. They're taking big damage on both sides. Mutas do come back to reinforce. The reinforcements did not come, and one Sunk is barely going to survive. The Mutas do show up here. Stim Marine's still pretty strong, especially with plus one, so a lot of Mutas actually do get killed off. But here comes those two Lurkers we were talking about. They're going to be able to repel this away. Crazy, still looking pretty good though. Look at that SV count. This one I'm talking about. He just needs to get comfortably in the late game. This guy is terrifying. But that means the army supply between two players is actually quite even here. If Jojo can keep hanging on, it might not be so bad. 
I've seen a lot of scans getting burnt through, which means he cannot have that many stored up. He's got one more left. There's also no starport even on the way yet for Terran, so these lurkers are going to be quite hard to fight. And it looks like Zerg's going back into heavy mutilus production. We're up to another 11 of them. Um, and those look like they just want to go counterattack uh, while these lurkers sit and prevent the natural from being busted. Only three, though? I mean, with a scan, uh, I feel like this amount of marines ought to be able to fight three lurkers, but there's... Terran is completely dry on scans. We got 26 and 28 energy right now, so... Oh, man. Gotta wait a minute, but so many reinforcements on the way, and Zerg hasn't been able to stop them from uh, getting all balled up. I see the double star part on the way, so eventually we will have that double uh, vessel production, but that means a radius miles away. The Mias finds a little pack of Marines and kills some reinforcements. That's some nice, good advantage here. And Jota does Marines have that. 1-1, one, one, though. Yeah, they're just going to shred these Mutos. They're like, yeah, come fight. <laughs> yeah, we'll and, take them. Ooh, there's a couple lurks up to 12. A couple Marines try to do something to get a, a drone kill, and the scan goes down. And it looks like that army parked outside of Nashville is going to transfer over to that 12 o'clock instead. We'll see if Crazy has enough force to go through. With only two lurkers there, one scan should be enough to do the job, but he's got to use the scan. Dude, I heard a stim. He's stimming around, but he's not going for it. Finally, there's the move forward. Taking some big damage, but should be able to break through and kill off this base. Reinforcements from behind, but none of them are lurkers. Not enough needling to fight these 1 1 Marines. I think they're just going to shred all of this. Uh. Well, wings are pretty good, though. Good unit. Uh, but good, still good, but not, not good enough. Quite enough. Right? Yeah. Lurker eggs morphing. There's more reinforcements at the bridge as well. That last so. I, I don't. Yeah. Plus one. I don't know if you're going to kill that time. <laughs> They're trying. They're trying real hard to kill that lurker. <laughs> but it's they not going to happen. They're working so hard. Uh, but yeah, I mean, now pumping out of six barracks. We got two starport science vessel coming out and no third in sight for uh, Zerg it means that I think karen has got a pretty good hold on this game. Zerg's making a lot of lurkers. Uh, this is kind of a you know, stay on layer tech style for a little longer, but uh, I mean, still, Hive, tech, uh, Hive Tech's on the up. way, so you'll get there eventually. I think right now Joe just got to stay on this game tech right now. He's still got to survive at this point. And lurkers are kind of the only thing here. The vessels did get made, a raid's about to finish, but the vessels haven't been revealed yet. So we can see another attempt to move forward, just trying to abuse the, the fact that scans are the only detection here. And actually, he finally breaks through, does clean up the rest of these. It's just a couple medics hanging out now, healing each other. So Jojo does alleviate the pressure, but he lost the 12 o'clock. He's backed on two base. He's trying to remake it now. Hive's about to complete, but really, the Zerg is not in a good position here. And Crazy can just kind of be a little more free moving forward, especially now that they do have vessels in the radiate. Yeah, science vessels of the radiate out are uh, hard to deal with. There are these, there are some scourge on the field, uh, and a lot of lurkers. If the lurkers can like secure these bridges, uh, it should be pretty hard for Terran to make much headway. Looks like lurkers are going going in for kind of a backstab type play, uh, which I like a lot. Get some lurkers set up at Terran's natural. Uh, but Terran gonna irradiate the lurkers that they see and come in with their marines. I don't know that there's enough home here to stop this for JoJo. Yeah, there's a lot of lurkers forward that are not gonna be able to defend here. Six lurkers, and if you look at the Zerg supply, that means what does he got back at home? Like eight lings, and that's it? There's some drones? Like, this is not gonna be enough not to go through. A whole lot. All right, here come those lurkers. Detection's there. Plenty of bio because of Crazy's macro back at home as well. So free detection. These uh, Marines do kill off all the lurkers without getting killed off. So that supply for JoJo plumped even more. The Filer Den is done working on consume. Maybe you can make a miracle, but you got to survive long enough to do it as Crazy's going to attack forward again. Yep, and Crazy's just got, yeah, at this point, too many Marines. It's not, not enough uh, Zerg fighting units. <laughs> Yeah, that's just one lurker on the ramp. Not stacked, not, not going to make some miracle shot. Joe's just going to tap out of game one. Crazy with the basic bio macro has enough muscle to power his way through to a victory. Yeah. Much, much bio. Very strong. Did that hurt your Zerg soul watching that? <laughs> well, I think, uh, I think this map is... Polaris is pretty hard, and like there's not a very easy third gas base to take. 
So I'll be interested to see if Jojo decides to play the same way on Polypoid, where there are a lot more options. Yeah, I mean, we'll end up seeing. I think there's also a lot more options to be a bit aggressive with your uh, mutas if you want to lean to that a little bit more. Maybe a better opportunity to get some damage done. But we'll see what happens in this game number two. In the top right in the blue Zerg, it's JoJo. And in the top left in the red Terran is crazy. We'll be interested to see if... I imagine Crazy will probably go for Bio again. I think Crazy prefers playing Bio, but he's certainly very capable of playing like Mech or 111 type builds as well, so he doesn't necessarily have to run back the same thing he did. I think it really uh, fits his skill set though, b b both because he's got the good timings to get into that mid game. You can see his macro is good, like keeping everything flowing the best he could in that, but also. If you come from StarCraft 2, you're used to playing Marine TVZ anyway. <laughs> it has a different flavor to it, but still definitely bio mobile, like not like this kind of slow mech style. Yeah, um, I just I know he I know he can do both because he's done both against me in practice. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, he can do whatever he, he like, wants. He likes he likes flexing he likes flexing the one 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 as well sometimes. Although that's a lot harder to a lot harder to do. Very cute build. Uh, Zerg is going to get the first scout here as well with their Overlord, which is always very nice. Ooh, look at that though, Extractor Trick. Different opening from Jojo, not a normal um, 12 hatch. No, Jojo Extractor Trick last game as well, actually. Oh, I wasn't did? sure if it was going to be for anything, but, uh, like, usually I only see Extractor Trick when you 9 pool. I don't think it does anything if you, uh, all patch afterward, but, um, some people like it. <laughs> I, I thought I remember way back in the day of reading like a little a bit about like doing extractor trick if you're not using it to skip the overlord and it's like it's so either exactly the same or it's so slightly worse it's literally just you're doing it to be a, like a swag. <laughs> I think actually Striker had a very good write up in CPL Zerg help on what the value of extractor trick is that like the point is to save a larva and so if you're not saving a larva with it it doesn't really matter. Uh, but either way, Jojo is going to float this Overlord in here. Going to see an SCV coming out. Uh, and this SCV coming out and going right back in is, yeah, a pretty good tell that you have located the correct base. Going to, once again, put uh, at least go up to two more drones for 12 drones before taking the gas. Let's see if we're going to take a gas right away here or if we're going to uh, go for a hatchery first. Yeah. Thinking about it? Not sure. Drones going back and forth. There we go. All right, so we got gas before the third hatchery, but it's a later gas, so I would expect that JoJo is probably going to do something similar to what they did in the previous game. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. And with Crazy getting that uh, racks or the CC on the low ground, he's got the barracks making some units. It's feeling very similar, though. I feel like uh, where's is he make Marines as fast? I thought he had more at this point. You know, maybe just a little tiny stuff. I'm not paying as much attention to as I would like. But with a well, gas behind it, should be able to start getting those upgrades. We'll see if it is eBay first or Academy this time for Crazy. Yeah, I'll be interested because last time Crazy actually saw the third hatchery before he put down his eBay, I believe. This time he won't see it. It's down at the uh, at the would-be third base. So I'm not sure if he's going to go for an eBay or if he's going to go for a second barracks. Well, I mean, at this point... It's like there's going to be an eBay. I think even if you don't see the third hatchery, the fact that if you know what time you're looking for for a lair... Like that can yeah. be the info you're looking for as well. Yep. The layer timing is very important for Terran to watch. Um, and then also the fact that these drones have pulled back off gas should be uh, an indicator that you're seeing the same thing as last time. Uh, meanwhile, in Zergland, yep, got the layer going down, got the third going down, um, just making drones. Uh, because Terran's only got the one barracks, you don't really need a whole lot right away. And this overlord parked on this ridge is going to see everything, so. We're in the kind of economic powering stage for both uh, both sides at the moment. Karen getting their production and Zerg getting their drones. Yeah, which I don't, I can't, I can't say I love that decision though because <laughs> we saw what happened last game. I think just be it is more, much less the meta game about the matchup, it's just about the player particularly. I think Crazy is the kind of player you want to mess with early on. I think you got to throw him off his bill. Don't let him just comfortably do what he wants to do. Well, I think a huge difference for this game is that our third hatchery is at a third base with a gas, which is going to make a, a big difference. Because that means that, like, 
if those mutas are able to get really any map control and you get those fast lurkers out, lurkers up this ramp at this main are going to be uh, unassailable even by plus one five racks levels of marines as long as you get the lurkers out on time. So, uh, yeah, but like another a big problem that we saw in the first game wasn't really the lack of a gas. He had plenty of gas when he got the lurkers. It wasn't really struggling for that at all. It was the fact that he did the mutas and they didn't do anything. They didn't punish the lack of the early turrets. They didn't really like pick off the marine very effectively. They kind of got chewed up by when plus one was hit. So I'm hoping Joe is a little more active, finds better opportunities to take some damage because Crazy's looking like they're building straight back up to what we saw before, five racks plus one. And Joe's going to have to figure out a way to deal with it a little more effective because there's a reason that this was like a, such a strong build when you saw a lot of like three hatch muta play. Like this plus rush five one is just so good at chewing it up. Yeah, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to see what uh, what if anything Joe does differently. Hydrogen's going down immediately. So we could see an even smaller dedication to Mutalis. Looks like we've got two being made at the moment. Uh, maybe just going to get like up to five or something to be able to harass Marines with. A lot more lings this time around, too. Good big chunk of lings out of the map. Uh, yeah, actually, JoJo didn't really mind from that second gas. Because I remember like in the first game, when he finished up the Spire, he had like 700, 800 gas. He was ready to yeah. make the giant pack of Mutalis. So already like very different decision making. So JoJo's doing something different, but... Crazy. It's just building the forest they want to build. Nothing looking too weird here. And JoJo's make, got to make sure he keeps an eye on that forest because there's only one sunken at the front. There's not going to be a lot of mutas to slow things down either. So could get really dangerous. Yep. JoJo looks like adding on another hatchery, uh, adding some sunks. Ooh, this I lane cage is doing the best you can here. Getting a couple kills off. Doesn't trade off too many links to do it, so nice little move from JoJo to poke in, get, keep an eye on what unit counts here, and make sure it's not moving out. Yeah. I'm guessing that JoJo is going to just want to go for a lot of drones behind this, uh, behind these sunks. Hope that their opponent is not going to, uh, push out too quickly. Uh, plus one attack is done. Marine range only just now on the way, so uh, still a little bit before those U-238 shells hit. But uh, lurker aspect about halfway done. And Crazy's gonna scan, scan the map and see that there's uh, only the two sunken colonies. But it looks like JoJo is gonna wisely put down a couple of more. We'll see if they'll be in time though. Stim is Stim is available, and only two medics. That's a Some lot of hydras, muscles. but no lunkers. Oh, even a fifth creep colony. He's really trying to. Is he going to go for the break before the sun gets finished? Moves forward here. Going to stim in. The meter's trying to help out the best they can. The focus fire is being spread out. One sunken goes down, second one about half health. The other ones do finish in time. The Mutas do die, but half the bio force goes through. He does some good damage, but doesn't break through, doesn't punish the natural. But still, he's pretty far forward. Reinforcements across the map. Maybe we're waiting for a round two. Yeah, and but lurker aspect is done. We have lurkers morphing. I don't know where. Natural. Um, natural. There we go. It's a couple lurkers morphing, and yeah, now that JoJo's feeling pretty safe, got another lurker at the third, and now like you're safe from a pretty good chunk of bio. And so it's back to drone drone time for JoJo. Got four more in production, going up to like thirty something. Going to probably take this third gas at some point to go into hive. Ooh, the lurkers, lurkers trying to move forward. That's a bit optimistic there. Get taken out by this, but the Marines stimming down off the raid, off the uh, high ground. Yeah, it does use a scan, so at least some of the reinforcements are going through. Scan goes down. I'm not sure where it actually saw, so I'm not really sure what he's looking for here, but you can see that JoJo just doesn't have a whole lot of lurkers. He's still right a little bit on fumes. Crazy being very careful though, considering that the factory is just finishing up now, so he's pretty far away from vessels and or siege tanks, whatever tech he wants to use here. Scan goes down at the front, sees sunkets, but no lurkers. There's one being morphed, and that's all he's gonna be. He's gonna move forward and try to break through again. Yep, uh, looks like the mutas will uh, will have to come fight. Is there any scan energy left? There's one scan at the net and one in the main, so we'll have enough even if this lurker finishes. Ooh, drones, drones, drones are gonna pull. Too. He's going for the Lurker. He is going to be able to kill it, but one spine gets off. It does eliminate all the Marines. Medics can't kill drones, so... Lurker's man, alive, was, too. Yeah, that was... 9 oh, HP it, Lurker. Oh, it did survive. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so, nah, that's and, dead. It's got to die. And again, JoJo holds an attack. JoJo makes six drones. 
Presumably we're gonna make this this hive soonly. Uh, trying to push out here, get a little bit of breathing room so that Zerg Terran can't just uh, come running every time. Although trying to go up this high ground again is really optimistic, I feel like. Uh, Crazy is gonna scan. There is not a ton here, although there is uh, there is that one 23 HP lurker. Uh, yeah. And I mean, Hive's he... going down, Evo's going down. Yeah, Crazy is got the two star parts finished working on the control towers in the facility now, so I don't think you have to be too aggressive going crazy. Like, you see the supply lead he has, plenty of workers. He's got a factory floating off into space now for some reason, which is fun. Yeah. But he's, um, he can still just scout. really, yeah, he might as well just scout with it, I guess. But he can start working on the size vessels, really kind of get that army where you want it to be. And JoJo's like, he did a good job drawing it behind us, but he's still in third base, and he's going to be hard-pressed to get the fourth. JoJo's getting a ranged attack, uh, which makes me think this is going to be, like, Hydra Lurker plus Defiler or something, or that that's a misclick. But hopefully it's not a misclick and we get to see something cool. Ranged attack is uh, a little rare. But well, there's now, like, five Lurkers here at this natural. Like, it takes a lot of Marines to kill five Lurkers with a wing buffer. Like... 1-1 one, one or otherwise, that uh, this is nearly unassailable. Yeah, I, I've Here's never... Find another way in. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing, fire. What is firing right now? Oh, there's a... Oh, there's a Marine... Point. There's a Marine shooting a turret. Yeah. Yeah. I was always surprised, though, that we don't see the plus one range more often from the Lurkers. The scan goes down, does kill off one that was poked a little too far forward. But doesn't... The Lurkers getting just the... gonna run by some Marines. One of them will die. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of Marines down at the bottom right. So it's crazy, really posturing forward, being aggressive, threatening attacks on multiple locations, and taking their third base at the mineral base as well. So looking at everything's comfortable. But we'll see. He's got the vessels in production, the radiates like ready, and plus one armor is about to finish. That's what the the range attacks for, so you still two shot Marines. Doesn't manage to get this uh, fourth base down just yet. And uh, Ooh, a couple he's fire bats to sneak in the mix. these lurkers out, but uh, that's a little, a little hard to do with all these marines where they are. Yeah, trying to sneak these lurkers forward is difficult with the marines spread out. But uh, is going to fly in some scourge, and it looks like it's going to be able to clear out the uh, the remains of the Terran out from the front of his base here, and consumes on the way. Plus one range attack is almost done. Uh, meanwhile, Perrin trying to deny this fourth base from going down, but uh, preventing the third from existing is really, really tough. Even just one lurker up the ramp is uh, pretty brutal. Jojo yeah. keeps running this drone down here, and it's uh, it's not going to work just yet. <laughs> yeah, I crazy is like taking these fights, and it's like there's a lot of medics here now, so he's actually kind of down firepower. But he's got a raise. He's trying to do what he can. Lurkers do burrow up next to everything. The pack of medics is going to abandon the army. Not going to try to heal any of this kind of stuff. And you can see it's just a lot of lurkers still moving forward. Crazy. Trying to reinforce. Ooh, Scourge going in. They're going to get some connections and take down two of the vessels. Lurkers going to burrow. Well, that's like a campaign cutscene right there. Lurkers run up and just burrow all around a bunch of bio. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, Jojo got like... found some really good fights. He's like, that supply was much more in favor of Terran, but now it's damn near even. And this bought enough time. Hive is complete. Can start working on all these defilers. Really kind of get into that late game. It's so scary to deal with. And even Lang's on the map. Gonna go over to the nine. Make sure there's nothing here. There is that one lurker that knows that there's nothing here as well. Maybe just prepping a counterattack. Just chilling. Just chilling. Uh, and it looks like maybe this uh, this fourth will eventually go down. And Zerg making Ultra Den. I don't, don't, I don't like going Ultra Den if you're not getting armor throughout the game. It's just they're so soft and squishy. <laughs> yeah, plus two attacks already on the way, and we don't have any armor for the Zerg, which is uh, a little rough. But uh, Scourge is going to come in here, get some kills on the Science Vessel. We have a Defiler. Is it going to put down the Chio Dust? It is. Yeah. Everybody loves Cheeto Dust. Uh, and uh, yeah, Crazy's army kind of can't be out on the map right now without uh, without sufficient science vessel support. 
Yeah, you know, I mean, just these marines are gonna get uh, uh, dark swarmed if they, if they try to get out there. Yeah, the Jojo's find a lot of good fights, take a lot of good trades, but Crazy still keeps growing in supply. Like even like taking these fights where he's losing a lot pretty handily, he's still up. Like every time I look, it's like twenty supply, then it's thirty supply. Raid's gonna start going down, whittling away some of these high tech units. The Jojo's just gotta be careful to engage in an intelligent way does finally get that next hatchery up at the natural of this bottom right location. The factory just hanging out and seeing it as well. But the pressure still from JoJo moving forward. But like, look at the reinforcements. Every time I look, Crazy's got a whole new army ready to go. And this applied lead is slowly growing, even though he keeps losing the fights. Yeah, Zerg doesn't have a ton of drones, unfortunately. Uh, does take out on a science vessel. Got some lurkers here. That'll pose a at least a speed bump for these marines. But uh, yeah, seems like Zerg needs more uh, more gas in the tank. Thirty four drones to sixty three SCVs. Although this is a very nice uh, kind of lurker cutoff here. Yeah, doing everything. Put more lurkers in between uh, in between the army and its reinforcements. Still, there's plenty of detection, enough forces. Crazy just muscling through, he doesn't even care. It's like he's still, again, that supply leak keeps growing. Especially as he's killing these lurkers, he's killing these defilers, and JoJo just doesn't really have the gas bank to kind of keep reinforcing them, unfortunately. There's a couple ultras in the bottom right, That's that was wasted resources. They're not going to be able to do anything. He's trying to transition into it, but he doesn't even have the chitinous plating done. He's got like nothing to go with these. What like yeah, why are you going into zero, zero zero ultra lists against what will shortly be two two marines? A little rough. Yeah, Although a radiate is a nice buff to the ultra lists. <laughs> That's still really really helps, them, helps them shoot through the marines quicker. <laughs> yeah. But you can see there's a force from crazy going to that bottom right. Jojo doesn't have a whole lot of defense there anymore. It was held pretty good early, but he hasn't really kept reinforcing it, just kept trying to be on the offensive. And now a whole bioforce can move forward. There's one lurker on the ramp, and you can see he's not even going near the ramp. He's going to be able to kill a bunch of drones, maybe this hatchery, and a couple ultras. This is going to be a great attack from Crazy, even things up a bit. Yep. Uh, and again, these ultras being uh, so behind on the upgrades are not really going to do all that much to the Marines. Uh, lurker looks like it's going to eventually clear these out, but, you know, stopping mining and killing a bunch of the drones, down to only 30 drones now. Uh, and there's no defense at the natural here for this force. And uh, big old cloud of science vessels starting to hang overhead. Well, here's also the big move that I, I was waiting to see. A uh, couple dropships got made, loading up some bio. That's going to be able to divert all the stupid defense that George is throwing at the front, going to the main, start taking out some tech. Yep. Uh, I think it's He's able to drop and bust the front at the same time. There's just nothing here. It's only these like two sunks. Scourge are gonna pop, but uh, you don't yeah, need science it? to kill the hatchery. And drop going off in the main as well. Uh, gonna kill off some hydras, kill off the tech, kill off the upgrades. Scourge doing everything it can, getting off a good amount of the vessels, but that's still it's not quite enough here. So much damage being done by the Terran, crazy. Still just doing a great job making the army, even in this situation where he's killing off all the Evo Chambers, Defiler Mounts done, clearing out the natural as well, and Jojo's just taking too much damage. He managed to win some fights, but Crazy's macro just powered through. It's too much. Yep, GG. One day, I'll play like crazy. <laughs> One day. <laughs> Oh, that's another 2-0. Pretty convincing games there as well, but not from early busts with some Hydra nonsense in CVP. These are a little more a little more played out and fun. Oh, but you know what? There's a lot of good games that we saw tonight. I had a great time watching this with StarCraft. How about you? Yeah, it was good. I really liked those games. Uh, even the PVT, which is not usually my cup of tea. It was a lot, a lot of good stuff. Oh, fantastic. Glad to hear you had a good time. But that is the last thing we got tonight, unfortunately, guys. So we're calling it a night for tonight, but we'll be here tomorrow. We got more CPL stuff. And then, like I said, Thursday in the afternoon, Thursday at night, we got plenty of casts on the way. Be in the Discord. You'll see everything you need to see about what we're doing. And before I go, I'll find something we can raid. That sounds like Gypsy. Sounds like a good call. Let's raid Gypsy and call it a good night. Sounds good to me. All right, everyone, take it easy.